We're live. We should be able to. Are we? We are. I can see all three of you in the thing. Oh, my YouTube is not showing anything. Mine neither. It might be a uh, delay. Here it comes. Delay. We're live. We should be able to. Are we? We are. I can see all three oh, of you. Oh, I can hear us. <laughs> and then meanwhile, mine's oh, like nothing. Not showing anything. Mine neither. It might be a uh, delay. Here it comes. Delay. <laughs> Okay. Hey. Okay. Mine works too. Oh Lord Almighty. Now we all have it playing in the background. All right. Let goodbye. Me just mute myself. I know. I, on I YouTube. Just turn mine off. Oh my God. Thank you so much for those of you who have dealt with our 22 minute delay of games. Ah, <laughs> we're so good at this. But you can hear all of us. Oh, can you hear all of us? And can see you all see us? us? If we have those two things, it will have been worth it. Oh, my God. Misty and Jen, can you hear us and see all of us? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Can you hear us? <laughs> yes, everybody, we, they can hear all of us. It's all, they can, all good. Can they see all of us? Yep. You're being oh, seen God. and heard at the same time. It's it only amazing. Took, only took a month. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, uh, well, you know, what did you expect? Retired parents on a Friday night. And Stephanie had one beverage at dinner and needed to be driven home. So, yeah, that's oh. where we're at right now. <laughs> that's my life at the moment. Oh, goodness. Although I am feeling very normal at the moment. Well, there is nothing get my like, vehicle if yeah, we nothing alive, like this moment. Vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Better safe. Anyways. Oh, my gosh. So. All we right. Were well, to, to kind of ahead. talk about, uh, first of all, thank you all for sticking with us as we figured this out. Maybe now we'll know what to do. The record, the Zoom was recorded, so we will just have to create ourselves a little tutorial of what the hell I did to make this work properly. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Just save that link right there. Um, yeah. yeah. But anyway, we are live. We appreciate it. We're going to talk about um, sewing room organization because mine is to the point where I cannot walk in it at the moment. So I'm going to spend most of my night um, cleaning. <laughs> it's what I'm going to do. It's very bad. Like I cannot work in here and I have to work in here this week because I've not actually made any of my clothing for the cruise and I have stuff I need to finish on my sample. Hopefully Ray and John aren't watching. I have not started my sample. Um, <laughs> it's small. It's 44 inches square. But I have 10 days. Something like that. 11 days. It's, it's a normal stuff deadline, really. No, like I used to make lap quilts from start to finish and write the pattern and do the video tutorial in like eight days. So, yeah, so you still have basically a wall days. hanging. I can do this, right? Yeah, I totally. Do them too is the problem. Now I kind of want to make it before you do so I can say that I finished it first because my stuff's all cut out. You might be able to do that. I have until Thursday until I have to film anywhere, though, like outside of my house. So I should take this as the gift it is and actually get stuff done. Can you sneak me in my suitcase? I feel like they might see you yes. on the x-ray, but I do have a very large suitcase that is currently filled with quilts from when I taught last weekend. So we'll see about that. Can we fit somebody in there with the quilts? I mean, maybe. I think they've still come up on X-ray though. But I'm so excited to wear fabric clothes. like Chantel Gail has, and it made a big difference. Do I? You have a starch convert over on YouTube, oh. Gail. Woohoo! I sewed something today without starch. I didn't oh, like it, like have a but I did it. I started Angie's quilt. I'll go grab the, it was, it was very hard for me. Everything wanted to stretch. It was so annoying. It was very annoying. I understand. So Misty I, is also I, only 5'1", by the way. So she fits with us. I yes. Okay. We I'm in the 5'1 team thing, too. The last project I was working on, I realized it was not a starch project because it was pre-cut. 
And I was like, oh, no wonder it hasn't been fun doing this project. Because then when I pulled out the Halloween quilt this week and I had starched everything and it's such a joy to sew and to work with. I'm like, I know. yes, yes. I told you. Flat yeah. items deserve to be starched so that they're even flatter. Agreed. Comics don't need the same level of starch. This is the block not, I was it, working I'm on. Not there. This is not good. Let's see. Is this the right way? This is the right way. So this is the block I was working on this week. It's um Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So it's part of so Angie uh Gnome Angel and she has her upcoming 100 day and we're doing the make the cut uh version of her quilt on the trip. And so it's like, well, I'll get started, you know, why not? Um, but with all of these tiny little pieces, I may have swore a few times because it, everything wanted to bend and move around. I'm doing another quilt that doesn't use starch right now, actually. But this one's a little more loosey-goosey. It doesn't need to be so structured. But yeah, I love my starch. I'm trying to do it without starch occasionally just to prove a point that I can or that I could even learn to like it, but it's not, not you know, gym. it's like drinking water without ice. Like, yeah, I can do it if I'm thirsty, but am I going to? Eh. I just, I don't even have a surface to put my computer on that's flat <laughs> right now. So I, I'm just going to kind of shove there? some stuff to the side so that I can this at is least a real a life. More space. This is a real example of what it's like to organize an actual room. Not YouTube friendly, you know, like, oh, I have a little mess in this corner. I have a giant. You have a no mess. Is what I have. This is not even a quilting book. This is my children's book. Yeah. Just hangs also, out here now. These are also children's books. They can deal with that. This is That's like, funny. this is how my daughter is. We went to Costco. There was this book called Everything You Need to Know About Math. She was like, I have to have it. <laughs> Sounds like the kind of book I would buy. Apparently, they are not, they're like saving fractions and decimals for last. And they've got like 30 days left of the school year. And it's two entire units. Plus, they have to like review the unit they're doing now, which is geometry. And she's like, there's no way we're getting it done. You got to teach me fractions. And I'm like... But that's the rescue. So. Yeah, that one, that one and cooking. That's the fun way to learn fractions. It is a fun it's way. It's true. I told her my like, mother plus three quarter. I'm like, that's a common cooking thing. And it kind of blew her mind. Yeah. So, it, we'll see. I mean, it wasn't even a couple weeks ago that I realized which by the way, I'm a bit of a math whiz. I've taken master's level derivative math for fun. So, you know, just to be fair, I swear I'm not as stupid as this comment, but I realized that a quarter was called a quarter because it's quarter of a dollar, like a couple weeks ago. That's that's interesting, Chantel. I'm not gonna say anything I know. else. <laughs> I know. You knew so, you just you know. forgot. You knew you just forgot. No, my mind was blown in that moment. It was kind of hilarious. Because I'm like, wait a minute. How did I not wait, remember? It just sounded like it was just the name of the coin, not the actual. It didn't have anything to relate. I mean, a dime isn't a dime of a dollar, you know. Oh, my husband has a request. nickel isn't a nickel oh, no. of a dollar, you <laughs> know. But a quarter is a quarter of a dollar. It is. That makes sense. Also, all the roads downtown in Chicago are named after presidents. And I lived there for like two or three years before I realized that's why they were named that. Can but we... everything else, I swear I'm intelligent in. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so organizing, what yeah. is your process here? What What do you even have out? Everything. Um, so it all started with the pants. I mean, it didn't. It started. This is my problem i spent the <laughs> winter working at joanne fabrics and they had a 2.99 flannel sale 
And I thought, I'm going to make all these custom pajama pants for my kids. It's going to be awesome. I've cut them. I sewed one together very poorly. I've done nothing else. It just has overtaken my room. I just live here now. It does. And this is not really something you can put really well on the comic book boards. So it's just, it's a mess. So and you should talk about the comic book boards, though. I for should. people that oh, haven't yeah. seen that, because I use the comic book boards, too, and it's a bit of a game changer. So you can see, I'm not going to walk all the way over there because I can't. Right I'll now. grab one. But of my what own. you do is you kind of create your own mini board, like bolt in it. It works really awesome. And then your fabric looks pretty. You can see what you have. Some people will also write how much is on there, which is really helpful if you're like cutting into it. Like I had a bunch of backgrounds that were like four yard cuts um, that, you know, I've gotten into. So people will be like, oh, I used two yards from this. There's two yards left. And they'll like cross it off. So they know what it is. For some of mine, I went in and was like, um, has not been pre-washed because I just got to a point where I was like, okay. I don't know I if anybody can see done. mine, but. Yeah, um, those are Chantel's things on comic book boards. Yeah, but I have I'd like to work on one lot. project at a time. And I did not do that when I was meeting like the first half of my book deadline. And it has not gotten better since then. So oh. right now, what I'm currently doing is putting all the Tula Nova stuff in this bin because the Tula Nova top like will not fit in one of my regular storage bins. I use the scrapbook containers. And I just want it in one spot for right now because I still need to do some cutting on that. I got some additional fabric, but it's not going to happen. Why won't it fit? Because it's too big. How so? Like that my center is more than 12 inches. So it doesn't Oh, you fit. don't fold yours up? I take the center paper out. See, I like it looking like that is my top. So I, but that, I yeah, have all my that is gorgeous. Just hold that up for everybody to look at for like a hot minute. It this has sat so like this for probably since whenever Spirit Animal came out. That is but beautiful. Yeah. So, so you I'm use thinking, I'm just trying to get everything together. But I you use those used, um those what are they called? Scrap booking. I usually do scrap booking containers that Michaels has them on sale all the time. I like the clear ones uh because I can see what's in it. I see can see what the color is. And then, like, you know, when Chantel and I went to go do a retreat, I could just grab the projects I wanted. I knew everything was in there. My body was in there. My pattern was in there. And I didn't have to worry about, you know, forgetting something that I needed. But I have to run to the ladies. So you guys talk amongst yourselves. And I'll be back. That's fine. I was going to talk about my hillbilly method of holding my parts, which is basically I have this thing for draperies. I changed my draperies throughout the year. Like, like I live in the 1920s in a fancy house, which I do. It's just the 2020s, not the 1920s. But here's my uh, Tula Nova. Gwendolyn, are you still on there? Yeah, I'm looking. I love it. Like once the, so yeah, I robed mine. It wants me to be in the picture and not the Tula. I know. Do you see this? My camera does the same thing every time I put up a quote block. Okay, so... so Go on about your, your draperies, changing out your draperies. So, yeah, so I, I change out my draperies all the time. And they come in these awesome bags that are clear and have a little zipper top. Mm -hmm. And I find that I'm not near as organized as stuff. And I tend to be the kind of person that stuffs things in drawers, regardless of how kind that is to my items. So I use these to hold my projects. And then so I use... Big, um, they make these big Ziploc bags. They're like huge. You can get them at Dollar Tree for like two for a buck or whatever. And um, I see your cat. Sorry, I'm having my squirrel moment here. And um, I love those bags because they have a little handle too. Oh, he's cute. Your cat's like gonna get the. Yeah, you got your real cat, and then that cat. Well, I mean, he might be real too. Well, she just jumped up on my sewing table a second ago and almost knocked everything off, so I had to. I had to say you were going to be organizing the whole time too, huh? Yeah. The cat yeah. decided to take it all with him. I, I, uh, I've never changed out my draperies that often, you know, I just get excited about it. I mean, I, I went to design school. It's, it's an unreal feeling to like constantly want to play house 
like redecorate the house, not clean the house. That's a very different thing. I don't feel like doing that ever. Maybe, maybe once a year I get like one of those, I just can't wait to get everything tidied up. And it's usually after a vacation where everything seems very blissful after a vacation. You're like, I can't wait to get home and get organized. This is hey, what I that's do. That's cool. I have, I have a whole, I don't know. I don't know how many of these I have. Maybe, I don't know. They're sterilized, they stack, so they come apart. Okay, so you have multiple tiers and go together. I probably have maybe 30 of them. And oh, wow. then I put a project in each. That way I can put, you know, my fabric and my cuts up here and I can put my finished blocks there. Or if I need oh, that to- makes sense. But I got to put a template in there or something special for that project. Cause it's not all, not all my projects are quilts, you know, some of them are that's project true. bags, some of them are clothes, some of them are. That's great. why I like my bags. And sometimes I get an inception of bags. Like I have bags that are holding things inside of bags that are holding things inside of bags. So I actually look at that too. Fun. I am. Um, I set up. up all my, um, my pieces for the quilt for Stephanie that she's teaching. I really just want to sew it because I have it all cut. I mean, you could. But, um, it's not like you get to come to my class. I have a huge hefty bag. Hefty. I love those. Yeah, so, they work great for things like this because it holds the whole paper without the paper getting folded up. And they, then I have baggies with my cut fabrics labeled with what they are. And then um, I even put my extra scrap that I might need because I'm sure I cut something wrong. Entirely possible. In a bag. Always. And then I usually keep the, the ruler or whatever, a template or whatever, if I have one. So like for this project, I'm going to be having, is it the four and a half or the six and a half? Four and a half, right? Uh, it could be four and a half. Six and a half is fine too, though. Yeah. Six and a half is around. preferred. This is what I do. I can't remember. So this is a combination of like, like this is a garment bin where mm -hmm. I've got all the fabric in it and the pattern and like the zipper and thread that I intend to use but then I also have stuff that I've started and not finished like Chantel you will recognize this one this one came with <laughs> we had our little retreat and I think I've taken it out a couple of times but it's got all my pattern in there it's got everything I want in there so I was so inspired by that quilt that but I you made a whole nother one instead of the one I you made a whole another Christmas quilt that wasn't the Christmas quilt I was supposed to be working on using some of that light fabric that you had the one with the Christmas lights yep pretty much that was for tied with a ribbon um, I kept saying to her I'm like well Chantel we did come to work on our Christmas stuff and then she would get out and look oh, at it no. I got so much stuff done you did by avoiding that wanted. one project. I finished so many projects. I wait a long time to be able to actually complete something. It's all good. that I want to do, and sewing is something I want to do. Now, so do my children want me to do it? No, of course not. So, what I'm doing currently is just trying to make sense of what I have because I have I taught last weekend. And I have two tubs and an entire suitcase full of quilts that need to be refolded to fit in the wall. And you have to fold it to a specific area. This is not something I want to do live on the internet. So I'm probably not going to do anything with that right now. But what I am going to do is try and organize my crap so that I can actually get stuff done. That makes That's sense. That's Folding the quilts so. might help in at the end because then you actually have room to fold them. That would be helpful. Yeah. But I need like a workspace here. Yeah. And I don't have any empty bins at the moment because I'm trying to not let myself buy more bins. So I'm like, I have enough projects, finish a project to free up a bin and then we can go from there. But I may need to cave on that because I'll need to bring like some step outs and stuff for the cruise. So, I do the like, same this is, thing. This though. is my cruise project right now, guys. I'm so far on it. <laughs> so far, I think I'm Brand further. John, don't panic. I've done. I've done more with less time. It's going to be okay. I mean, if you did it early, I would be worried because that means that know, you were right? confident in the project. <laughs> so at this point, kind of what my plan here is 
is to just kind of put things, you know, where they belong. Because everything does have a place in my sewing room. Believe it or not. Like, I designed it. I took a month packing it and putting everything up so that everything would have a place. The problem is, is nothing made it back there. Because what I'd like to do is, like, do one project at a time. But when I was doing the book, like, that just didn't I got chaotic. At all. Because I was doing too much in too short of a time span. And then never, it never really got cleaned up. Like, I like to do, like, a reset in between projects. And I have too many things happening. I started doing that because you said to do that. And so now before I get down here on Friday, I try to um, tidy something up at least. And actually my room's looking pretty good for me. Well, we have entire boxes of kids stuff that ends up on the wrong <laughs> side. On the pity potty. This is not. You know, you're an American girl fan. And you can do the item. On my side. So. I wanted to show my fabric for the your project yeah would you pick? i pulled out some goodies i got some ruby mm -hmm. star there let's see i have a little bit of allison mm. i don't know who this was by but this was a uh, ladybird by i don't remember but it's it was That's a really cool cute. line it has has little little birdies let's see that's an allison i probably ate these ruby. <laughs> i couldn't tell you this, but they're empty and they're my area, so it's probably... Oh, I I had hidden candy that I hid and managed to accidentally hide from myself, and I found it the other day down here, and I was so excited. That's funny. I know. It was, I it was Easter candy, candy, too. There's still hidden candy around here. Who knows when it'll come out of the crevices where it's hidden. This is a highly yeah. important thing. This is how I save all my video. It has yeah, you need that. Card that it belongs in, and these are really expensive to rebuy. It was under a pile of shit. Oh no, it was under a pile of shit. <laughs> I think we can all relate, and if you can't, then you're one of those people that can functionally actually clean up as you go every single time. But that just kills my natural excitement when I'm doing a project. I can't clean up as I go. I'm excited, you know. So, it, I don't. I don't think if my mother-in-law does watch this, she would make it this deep. So I think I can share this. This um, She was out last weekend and she made a comment about our laundry, which was not bad. It was like a week's worth. And we get like about five loads of like clothing. Plus then she's absolutely, she's like, when it gets that bad, you just need to take it to a laundromat. You're going to blow out your, your dryer. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> clearly have not done this like my dryer already has beef with me she's like you just need to do like one load a day and i was like i feel like most mothers of children are not doing that she's like well i do it jenny does it my sister -in -law. she's like what does your sister do her house always looks really clean and pictured on the internet i'm like one nobody's going to picture of their house on the internet that looks like a hot mess it's always going to be edited somewhat and th so I said, I was like, well, she has a really large master closet and all the laundry goes in there. And once a quarter, they deal with it and have like 20 some loads. I don't. Once a quarter? <laughs> yes. It's like <laughs> semi-annual laundry day. Well, they're it's teachers. Every three months. They're oh teachers. Load bearing laundry right there. Basically. You can't move it anymore. But like they're teachers. So whenever they have like a longer time off of school, that's when they get caught up on all their stuff. And so she's like, I don't believe that. So then I like pulled my friends. I was like, I need photos of your laundry this second to send to my mom. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I was like, three I... out of four people have laundry right now. And I said, Chantel's laundry pile and my sister's laundry pile, both of which were worse than mine. And I'm just like, it was rough. I'm not yeah. alone. This is normal. Feel what she's saying, okay? Because I've totally did that. I've totally, you know, in the past when laundry has gotten too backed up, went ahead and went to the laundry mat and got caught up. Which is fine, but that's not backed up. Like one time, like that's normal. Like what I was showing, it. that's backed up. It was normal, normal yeah. amount of laundry. But I um, I love this one book that's by. Um, she's called, um, her name's Dana White and she's the slob comes clean woman. Um, and she has a couple books like, um, 
yeah, I can't think of them off decluttering at the speed of life. And they're, they're awesome books for people like me that are just like, it doesn't come naturally mm-hmm. to like tidy up after yourself immediately. And then all of a sudden you turn around and everything is freaking messy. And you're like, wait, when did that happen? Why? Um, but her thing is that she tried a million different things. And for her, it was laundry day is what actually worked out. She couldn't make it a daily task. And the fact is that laundry is the task you're allowed to walk away from while you're doing it. My and I walk away very house, seriously every single day when I try to do it every day. My aunt's house is spectacularly clean, always has been. And she sets aside a day. Every Monday she does her laundry. But she does it start to finish, puts it all away, which like, well, I just that's how you're supposed to do house. it. But I prefer to wash it and let it sit in the basket where I can pick out the clean stuff again that I like. That's hallelujah. I- that's what I do. Yeah. It's OK, though. I mean, uh, yeah, I know all that hanging space in my closet really should be big shelves just to put the clean baskets back in really like, as they are. I don't know why. And I think I need to hang everything because I want to see it all. But then hanging, it's annoying. So I'm trying to clothe other people around here, right? I feel like we need to have a poll of our folks watching. Absolutely. Like, how do you deal with your laundry? Are you a, a load a day person or are you a once a week or are you a, oh my God, I have no more clean underpants. I better put something in the wash. <laughs> like, I feel like there's those three camps. Yeah, there there are. And I think there are certain people in certain times of their life that are are certain ways. Yeah, because so like if I'm traveling a lot and stuff, when I get back, my clothes live in my suitcase for like two months before I get them on. Yeah, I'm the worst. Like I pull out I pull out all the dirty stuff, get it taken care of, but all the clean stuff, you know, it stays in the yeah. in suitcases. Um, so I'm terrible about that. But normally I wash clothes every day you know that's the routine is to take care of it every day or every other day you know just as it builds up not to let it get out of control or whatever but there like you things. wash the clothes you wore that day like the next day or are you well, a little more behind than that it depends it it depends on what's going on so I don't think I've I'm ever doing, done that if I'm doing the linens that usually puts me behind and then I have all the clothes that will you know, have to wait. So it just, it depends on what's going on. It also depends because I, um, since I watch my grandson, how much I'm watching him and how dirty he is and what he's done. And if that would have to go in the mix or the animals, their beds, and I wash all their beds, you know, so it it just depends. The kids are a laundry factor. Once a week. And we have one person who says the beauty of being grown up is you get to do it your own way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. that would work I like that <laughs> I like that too sometimes it's hard to explain <laughs> to other grown-up people yeah like this well when somebody has oh. something that works for them it doesn't always mean it's going to work for everybody else right but that's good for those people that can get it done they well, still like to know all. about how other people do it too though because then that way I can at least try it and see yeah, if it'll it work works. for me. yeah so my I'm husband struggling to do my dishes every day, guys. I, I'm never gonna. I. My never... husband does a lot of the laundry, not the way I would do it. But I, I have learned that you do not complain when your husband does something, even if it's not the way that you would do it, because he's he's done it. I'll never do it again. And there are a lot of husbands who who don't even do that much. So I'm like, it's okay. Um, but this is an example. These were hung to dry. Rather than put them away properly, they are currently on my long arm. So yeah, it's the treadmill. Now I have the choice: do I leave them there and not clean up my stuff, or do I deal with it now, or do I just wait until tomorrow when my crazy children are driving me up the wall? Do it. I'm solo do it. for ten days straight. Get it over. Or for ten hours straight. Oh, but I don't have hangers now. This is the problem. I had to buy more hangers today, which is the bad thing. It's like you said with the bins. You didn't want to buy more bins. Sorry, I'm moving you guys. Um, you didn't want to buy more bins because you shouldn't have to buy more bins. You should just finish the projects. But yeah. I finally just was like, you know what? I'm going to buy the hangers. 
I'm going to try to get everything up and then I can go through it because I can't even get into my wall. I, Maybe this is what I'll do. I will fold the There are unaccessible before. areas of my closet. Very unaccessible. Okay. So did you find when you bought hangers, I mean, I know this is totally like out there in left field, but when you bought hangers, the quality of the hangers nowadays is not what they were 10 years ago. Like they break in a second. When you, so I feel like I still have hangers from like thirty years ago, and oh, those for sure are I do. thick. For sure, I, I get do. these my ones. My kid Target. pulls their shirt off, and the whole thing breaks. I get my hangers from Target. I used to have all the wood ones, which I really liked, but then I found that I could fit more things in my closet, and my closet is three and a half feet wide, so I need to be able to fit as much in it as I can. And so I switched. I measured it exactly <laughs> three no, and a half. I have yes, I know exactly. I think it's thirty. I think it's 42 inches exactly. Um, so <laughs> I went and got the flock hangers because you could fit like double the amount of clothes in there. Because I like I did that too. Yes. But then and I, I found that I'm too over. lazy to try to get everything to fit perfectly on those hangers because it, everything wants to catch on them. And I want them to hang. Yeah. I, I'm that way too. I think I've given up in general. I, it's only good for the clothes that really need to hang up. I think I'm having a hot flash. Either that or my iron is also a heater. You know, we are entering that phase of life. I have a lot of people uh, warning me about what's coming. It's like they bum, were bum, bum. Hard, so now they're making it their business to warn everybody else. Yeah, I think we're there. He We're getting there. So Fridays are usually slow in the morning. So they try to knock out all the washing and cleaning in the morning. Her weekend is free to sell. That would be nice. I technically I used to clean a lot on less Friday. hours, but I still can't keep up with it. No. I don't know. I know. I felt like sometimes when I have a better structure of my day, I'm actually better at doing those chores. But when I'm home all day, I make dishes and I make laundry and... Plus, I have I have little kids, so I have yeah, you're gonna mess a two year old, and you know, who really likes barbecue sauce. Yeah, she's gonna make barbecue sauce laundry. and ketchup for breakfast <laughs> with no food, just ketchup and barbecue sauce. It was like if this was the first kid, it would have been like a no way. This kid is like screaming about it. I'm like, whatever, kid. Here's your barbecue sauce for breakfast. I am gonna put the Zoom link in for you guys if you would like to join us over there and join our chat. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear about your projects to, and things too. Especially now that we have um, are working correctly on YouTube for Woo we got it right the first week and then never again, and so now it's finally correct. If we can figure it out next week, I'll be really proud of us. And then we have what one that that's the last one before we're on a boat. So you guys are going to try, try to, to meet do it. with you guys. We're yeah. going to try to do it from the boat. It it might be a little challenging because um, there's time changes. And I have no idea what that time change is going to be on Friday because we might have like, we might need to switch it up a little bit. Um, but we can even figure out what day it is. <laughs> yeah, that too. So I do know for sure the 17th, we are not going to be doing it because we are going to be flying back from London that day. And I, I am not going to be fit for that at all. Maybe we could do is it that night? In, like the night before. Like, you I'm know what? We'll have to do that because um, we'll have to show our family. I'm also going to be liberty. out. Like we get back that day, but I'm not going to be in um, at home. Yeah, Although I'm always to... hand sewing. Then again, yeah. you know, we'll have to do a special visit to Liberty and get some hi and get some uh, footage of us there and. We can. You don't put some of that. dirty dishes in the sink. That is that is enviable. Hi, Misty. I and that's a goal. Except everybody keeps eating in this house. They keep eating and wearing clothes. Like how dare hey, they? What's what size is Penny? Uh, two. You three would you like this sweater? It's three T. Oh, it's so cute. She it's from Baltimore. On clearance. Oh, I love myself some Von Mar. I grew up it's, with Von it's Mar. It's super fuzzy, too. It's it so will be cute. Yours. I will bring it with. Yay! I think this one, too. I bought this one specifically because it looked like I could have made it myself. 
Oh, it's like a little bit thicker yarn, but it's good for the summer or the winter because it's so cold. There is, of course, yeah. a stain because, you know, a toddler, but. Yeah, well, I mean, it's there's going to be a stain with child barbecue sauce. Like, it's what baby good. likes barbecue sauce? Like, what? But back to organization, if we could try that. Yes. Well, I, I mean, know. whole I home organization do... is a thing, too. I have to do like a section at a time. Like right now I'm going through this and I'm like, I have folded the things that I can fold. And then I have things that need to hang. And I, I basically kind you can't tell right now, but I have sorted this situation to where I have a place to set the computer. Wow. And then this normally sits out. I have this project together. I have my sewing projects for the cruise out. Um, I'm missing a pattern that is somewhere in this disaster. It'll come. It, you know, I just have to make my way that way. So I'm starting to because this is like the flat workspace. It works good. And I'm dealing with the clothes and I'm just going to like work my way that way. And it Sounds is what like it. a plan. For right now, I'm going to hang this on with the other hang dry stuff. And that will have to be how it is for now. But I just like to take it in chunks and like work my way in a somewhat make sense manner. And as long as everything has a home of where it does belong, even if I have to resort it because I've added to whatever is in that collection, at least like I know where it's supposed to go. I'm pretty uh, good about having her, a home for things. But her now D says her now 22 year old ate tartar sauce from the fridge. I mean, what can you do? Fish sticks, too. Fish sticks, yes. <laughs> Vanderkamps. I was never a fan of fish. My earliest memory is of my grandpa uh, cleaning a fish while I was still alive. And that, that did it for all seafood for me. All my, my dad was a fisher. Kind of, I mean, I have pictures of me like in a baby, like I'm literally in the baby carrier. He has a cigarette over me, mind you, it's the 80s. And he's like holding a bass. Like clearly, I am on the boys' trip. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I have to go find my glasses because oh, oh, I'm it, still going to be here audibly. When it comes but, to fish, I guess because um, I was raised in the Midwest. I don't know if that's the only reason why, but um, we mostly had cod. We, we mostly had cod. And so. Oh, see, we have walleye know, and catfish. Fish Friday. I'm from the Midwest, too. Yeah, I don't, I didn't like, I guess that we did have, um, did go to fish fries that had uh, catfish, too. But I didn't care for the catfish when I was a kid. But then when, um, you know, in adult life, being married and stuff and coming out here to the East Coast, it's so fish heavy being along the coast you know the restaurants and everything there's so much and even though my daughter my husband do not like fish um I have tried lots of different type of fish and have expanded my fish range and so I actually like it better now than I did when I was a kid and when I go back home I will eat catfish which I would not eat when I was a kid but still my favorite is always cod it's always it's always the fish fry cod that makes sense. I yeah. like, I like cod. I, I like most fish actually, but actually my least favorite cooked fish is salmon, which is kind of weird because most people love salmon. Yeah. I don't care for a whole lot of salmon. However, I will say I had some like fire, it was like fire crusted salmon or something a few years ago. And I was shocked about how much I loved it. To me, it's like a freshness thing. Like, I don't know why anybody would eat sushi in the middle of the Midwest. No, I don't like sushi. That just sounds disgusting to me. No. And like, I do it. like out here with fish fry, like it makes sense to have perch and like stuff you would find in the lakes and river. But like, I wouldn't want anything other than that. And really the only time I ate fish, I would eat two tiny little things of fish. Just covered in tartar sauce <laughs> that my grandpa caught and prepared each year and that was it that is absolutely it one year i was a uh g says she likes mahi mahi um oh i like mahi mahi one time 
<laughs> I was a vegetarian for like seven months and I Me went too. up there and he did not understand. He's like, you mean you can't eat fish? No, grandpa, I'm not going to eat the fish. But it was like, I was like, I have a really good way to say I'm not eating the fish, hopefully without offending him. But yeah. All right. I'm back. You're and back. I found said glasses. I am not doing anything that requires my glasses at the moment. I'm just starting to get headaches if I don't have them. And so, you know. I've heard more people talk about having headaches this year than anything. I am convinced it's because it's the year of the cicada. The year of the cicada. And this year there's that like um, special where there's like the two, I I guess, um, breeds or something. One of the seven years. And, and they, haven't, they haven't had this type of cicada um, come out since like eight, 1807 or something like that oh my it's God. like two different breeds or how does it like survive that long? i don't know i this don't know i could have, have, I could have parts of know. that wrong just look it up just look it up it's something special about this year and i think it's causing everybody to have headaches that's what all I'm you saying. know what i have a friend who um is an entomologist at augustana college and she is also a fantastic knitter and she designs her own knitwear that is bug inspired and also makes her own garments that are bug inspired. We should have her on. Yeah. Oh, okay. That would be kind of funny. That's where I was going with it. I just bought some bug fabric. I just bought some bug patterns up at quilt kind. There was moth and ladybug dragonfly. Oh, People that sounds would be cute. like offended when we included bug fabric in our fashion they're like i don't like this one. bugs like, some people really like them well <laughs> i was offended good. every time there was the color purple because i don't really like the color purple much carla berg walker says the chesapeake bay blue crab is the absolute best oh and gail says she misses good seafood now that she lives in oklahoma she Ooh, was a yeah date before yeah. you're like you as, as so away from any type of fish as you can get in Oklahoma. Oh. Does my hair look better, y'all? <laughs> I'm like out here doing my hair. It's all good. It doesn't matter. You're right. It doesn't matter. So QT sent me, I'm supposed to be doing tutorials for something. And they sent me, instead of with a fabric, they sent me backing fabric for cutting the background. Oh, and they sent you what? It's a beast. They sent me with a fabric. So I've like... Like, I don't know, I just had to cut it straight down the center. And now I'm trying to tame it. Because I literally have an entire box of this stuff that I have to deal with at some point. It's funny. I'm on to my second beverage of the evening. I'm very excited about my koozie tonight. It says sloth. That is very cute. Yeah. So for those of you who were not on earlier, I went out to eat with Courtney, who used to edit our videos back when we had a whole team. And... um I had one drink with a carb heavy dinner of pizza, a whole big salad and a lot of bread Yum. and cheese. And she had to drive me home. So I'm feeling fine now, but I was in a state at about eight 30 and Adam, my husband was concerned about me going live on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she was like, no. called me. She wanted to like, witness this in real life i, I did of course i did i'm a good friend like that i'm going to you laugh are. with you and help pick you up fun <laughs> or laugh so, at you and watch you fall no <laughs> it was pretty funny but it was it was funny it was she's like, like oh god really how bad is it she's like you look very happy but literally i have one drink so this makes me concerned for the cruise hey because well going on the way i make my drinks thing. and the way like actual bartenders do is it's different we're going to learn all about this before long. See, I keep on getting the hot and cold thing, guys. Like, I just literally just put the sweater on. And I'm like, no, I'm not. It's too hot. I, I'm in between. I don't know what to do with myself. I started after I got COVID the last time getting hot flashes during my cycle. And I'm like, what is this? It's Me too, cool. actually. This is not cool side effect, dude. Not ready life, for that. Life is funny like that. It's like, you just can't your body's like yes you can have children and then it's like ha not only should you not have children anymore but you're going to sweat about it 
for five no, still 20 can, years though, for some of it <laughs> well yeah I know that's kind of where like, oh my gosh well how old is Cameron Diaz she just had a kid she's like 50 oh you know science 52 with that I think she's 52 <laughs> there was science I'm sure yeah, how exhausting would that be? Stephanie 2.0. This must be Stephanie Brennan. Yes. <laughs> She's the only one I know. I like of. how Misty is out there in space. She is in space. She's you guys can space. join us at the Zoom if you like. I love it. And let me pin this one. Hopefully Stephanie 2.0 is Stephanie Brennan, but maybe, yeah. Yeah, we did have a creeper a couple weeks ago, but now I know who it is. We did. We don't let that person. Now we don't let that person. That was weird. That was a little weird. He he tried to come in last week too, and I just didn't let. Him. Yeah. Oh really? So he came back. He did come yeah. back, and I just denied him entry into the zoo. But that's okay. I mean, maybe he meant well. Who knows? You know, it's fine, but when you're like hitting on people and nah, like yeah, how Misty not the and she's like, Hi. he was totally Hi, trolling, hundred percent. This is not the forum for telling <laughs> no. women that they look good. Like, I mean, we all need a bit of flattery, women. but maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Oh goodness, bit. Not forty. I don't want to age anybody. Chantel still has like two years to go. <laughs> I have a few months. Uh, like six yeah. months. I'm 38 and not quite a half. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being little. Oh, the thing is, is that Get most city. people treat me like I'm 25 because they yeah, look at me. You look a lot younger. You're like my daughter. My daughter looks a lot younger. Um, but sometimes it's people. annoying. I'm assumed to be incompetent. When really I'm just small. What I find annoying. I don't know. I totally lost that train of thought. I just um, lost. <laughs> so okay. I was chatting with a friend and we were talking about our kids having kids. And I was like, I hope that I've got a good like 10 years before like I'm a, or 20 years before I'm a grandma because Angela's nine, almost 10. And she's like, ah, you might just have 15 on that one. I'm like, I hope not. Nope. 25, like, your funnel robe isn't fully formed yet, like. Isn't that crazy to think about? A little young. Like, <laughs> Thank you God you and I made good choices, Chantel. That could have been bad. I mean, where I came from, I was pretty concerned that the water was going to get me pregnant. It didn't take much out there. So. Oh, yeah. You you were. Actually, when I was struggling to get pregnant too. with J.D., yeah, so I was struggling was like, to get pregnant takes with one Jamie. Time. Uh, my friend Andrew brought me a uh, water from the town that I lived in. Yeah. Because I was struggling to conceive JD. And uh, yeah, he brought a bottle of water. He literally poured out a bottle of water, filled it up with their tap water. And right. I got pregnant lo not long after that. So That's it's in the water in Sterling, Illinois, if anybody needs to know. That's the secret. <laughs> oh, get it. Like, um, yeah, if you, if you want to, yeah, it, it's, it's there, whatever it is, it's magic out there. I don't know what I want to do with my life here. I'm looking around, like, I don't want to do my project. I don't want to yeah. do this. I want to play on my long arm. All this way. But my shoulder is hurt from playing on that too much. I need to have this place looking decent before my mother comes. That's what needs. To That's true. At least you have a fire under your patootie yeah. for it because uh Yeah. Well see hey, I did buy you one of these. Well, I didn't buy it actually. I got it when I got my long arm. Please excuse our appearance with your quilty. That's pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah, there were two of them, so I grabbed you one. I I need we have several things that we have just been picking out for each other. I know. Okay. I am making the executive decision to put anything that I have not cut into pants yet onto. I think that's a good idea. Actually, onto the roll. 
Yes. Well, I have some new fabric. I got the mini starry in the neon pink and the black. I know people are. Like, Anybody no. get any new fabric at least like recently? I love the mini starry. I have that. So good. So good. I've been trying to be good. Given that we're going to, you know, go to trying. I know. Well, I, I hadn't bought fabric in. Since we went well, out of business? That's not really true. I went to a quilt <laughs> store not that long ago. Listen, I hadn't been on Etsy separate. for a while. Hate how I, I meant well. This is covered in dog hair. It has never been washed with anything other than like other flannel. There just is dog hair swirling around in my. It's dress. just in the atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> it hasn't been on the. Floor. Ooh, Misty what? got some batiks today. Nice. Do you pre-wash your uh, batiks, Misty? Uh, we were talking about laundry, and I was thinking about pre-washing, how I can't pre-wash because that would be another load of laundry. I can't. Exactly. I can't manage that either. I only do it for, like, garment stuff. I just throw, I will... like, an entire box of color catchers in there, and I'm like, peace be with you. Let's... Which, I only yeah. pre-wash. I haven't pre-washed any of this garment stuff either. I only pre-wash oh. vintage fabric. Like if it's come from a secondhand place somewhere or online somewhere that it's vintage or um, secondhand, that's the only time I pre-wash because I don't I will if it's for clothes. The cleanliness of it. For clothes, I'll try to pre-wash. Misty says she doesn't. Although batiks make me a little nervous because the dye process is a little different. It is, but it's like dyed in like boiling water. Boiling, boiling water. Yeah, Multiple that's not going to be so bad. I like had a bathing a suit not that long ago that, like, would give me a pink puddle around myself when I would get out of the water because, for whatever reason, I got it on Amazon. I don't know what I was expecting. But um, so it just goes to show that even the processes for how companies deal with fabric is not exactly the same as it used well, to be. So when you're in the fabric world... I don't know why any of them promise to have December delivery of batik because that is all hand dyed. You need the sun to do it. A very bright, intense sun. It's a rainy season over there. And there is a lot of um, holidays around that time um, for the yeah. religions that are prominent. And it's, it never shows up on time. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know why you decided to do that because just just offer it in January. You're not going to be able well, to get yeah. it out in December. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I wish we all shut down in January for like two weeks and had a nice break. That'd be nice. I need that yeah, after the holidays because the holidays they do that. aren't very holiday like. They do that like in Holland, don't they? Do they still do that? I know they used to do it where they would shut down for like a month, the whole country. I don't know, but we need to do you that. You would have to have, like, support <laughs> payment somewhere. That would be, like, a tax dollar spending thing. I don't think we'd ever get that in the U.S. No. No. Too much money to make. We can't even get paid maternity leave as a thing that your company has to pay for. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I feel like I'm getting ready to go on maternity leave because of the length we're gone and the amount of stuff. <laughs> done it does feel a little bit like that. Like I got to get it done. It's gonna it be like a month later. Like when I was, I had like twenty some clients before I had Angela that I needed to get six weeks worth of work done for because it was me and two interns filling the whole thing, and I knew I couldn't have two college interns writing and approving. Oh, no. It's just not gonna happen. So not gonna work out. I had I got it all done and was stressed out and had to deliver early. But <laughs> I got it all done. Yeah, you didn't sleep. I mean I slept. That was that I was had with Lily. gestational hypertension. That's what I we all that nonsense. But hey guys, I'm gonna be about off for a minute. I need to like go blow away. I I don't know why. I was just like my nose is running terribly right Mine now. I'll be back. Too. I think it's all the fuzz. It might just this. be the fuzzy from the fabrics. I don't know, but I'm like having a runny nose moment. Now our yard is all torn up and it's been a mess. Look at you. Even you, you're like, oh my God. I am. It's like, I can feel it coming out. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh 
I'll be right back. I, I'm going to like leave, but I'll come right back. It's all good. I got to check on the husband too and make sure those kids actually made it to bed because we know how that actually goes. My children are actually quiet. I think they're asleep. It's like- I'm not sure what's going on up there, but I'll be right back. So Stephanie, I, mean, I remember your video about organizing um, your fat quarters when you put them in the clear mm-hmm. um, containers. I still have them in there. Yes, they I spend. love that way of organizing. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, since I since you've done that, I've seen that lots of um, time on different people's YouTube videos yeah. and stuff, different creators. I'm taking you with me. Yeah, it looks great. I like it in the clear because then I can see what I have. Um, Is it? Does it seem functional really pretty, though? Right? Oh yeah. I mean it's a mess down there, but but yeah, that looks great. Looks really is it is it functional for you to find the fabrics it when is. you want, want to be able to curate like a maybe a a certain um cohesiveness for a quilt pattern that you're doing? So like, but you don't want it all to be the same line. This is all my Tula and I just mix it all together in, in color order. Um and then this is all my Stephanie Brandenburg. This is all like five inch squares and stuff. And then I have random free spirit, um, random other stuff. This is a lot of Allison Glass here. Some more random free spirit. I have all my solids down here. So that's all mixed up. And then all the boutiques are in one section because they used to work a lot with that. And then this stuff down here is more like the blenders. And things that are more like holiday themed. So yeah, like when I went to do a poll for the project I'm doing for the cruise, I knew I wanted, I mean, I still, I don't have as much freedom in the way that I do quilts as like a regular quilter. So like I knew that people might want to get this. And so I needed to think, what can I use that's like a blender that people can rebuy for a long time? And that they can maybe get from somebody else besides me. So sure. I went through, rather than do all of her beautiful prints that I collected over the collections, I went to her um, Plaster of Paris, which is her blender. And I pulled those. Because then that can be replicated and other people can get the kit and make it the way I did. And so sometimes I'm still like, you know, have to work within those bounds. Or like someone will want me to come up with something for a collection and I have to work within the bounds of that collection. But, but yeah, I, I find that I am using my stash more um, now that I don't have to like, you know, do a quilt every single month with this specific fabric. Right. And that's nice. Although there still is some of that, but it's not at, it's not the same. So. So do you. Do you think that you have more um, fancy prints or focal prints or blenders? What I have. And what do you like to use more? So most of the stuff that I have are things that we got that sold right away. Because if I had to make something with it and then it's not going to be my stash, then that's what we did either for stash with Stephanie or um we I liked it and we sold it right away and so I just kept it for like someday to use my stash so like Tula I have like almost everything that she's put out in the last six years yeah I've got a lot of Tula and I have not done I mean I made Tula quilts but not like like I have like over 500 fat quarters I need to stay with and it's all the little ones it's all the big ones it's all the things um, I have a lot of Allison glass that's more like blendery type stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a mix. Like sometimes I'll have whole collections. I tend to not buy a little bit here and there because I wanted to kind of work on it. How many quote products do I do? Projects do I do at a time? I like to do one. <laughs> that's, that's ideal. I know that that's not like a realistic answer. Like I know one time I, heard about um alex anderson does one quilt at a time and um she tries to do it where like she can get it done with anywhere from like a day to a week and that just 
I'm not what? disciplined anymore no. now that I don't have to be and get things done that quickly. But I like I'm my brain works much more when I'm working on one thing. And if I do need to put it away because it's not like a priority deadline project, I like to to get to a good stopping point. I like to put it in my bin. I like to put it on my shelf. And then when I come back to it, I know where everything is at with that. Um, I have to work on multiple projects at a time because yeah. I kind of get bored. It's it it's like I'll work on one for a while and then I'll kind of get bored of working on that before I finish it or before I get to a certain point. And so then I'll put that away and then get another one out. I usually don't like simultaneously work on them, like both on my sewing table at one time. It's it's usually just, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months or a couple days that I'm on one and then whenever I get tired of it, I switch to the next one. I can't ever think of any project I've ever done where I had a start date and I started with it and then went straight through and finished at the end of it. But also let's not forget I'm a serial starter. So I start <laughs> more projects than I finish. I finish I mean, them. I just don't finish them as often. <laughs> I have an entire bin of pajama pants that have been cut and are just ready to sew together. And I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> like they're half sewn together. It's bad. You're doing four different sew alongs and it's hard. Yeah, that would be kind of hard to keep up with. What I would end up doing if that were me is I probably would um be like taking notes and putting my notes in my bin and that would work. Although that can be kind of fun because, you know, especially if you're one, I can't really do this now that I have kids, but before I had kids, my husband worked nights a lot and well, all the time. So we only had like two nights a week to be together. And the rest of the time I could come home and do whatever I wanted. And so I would sew a lot. That's kind of when like the blog really took off and I started designing patterns because I could do really anything. And, you know, you're making girl dinner. That's not too fancy. And, um, but that's not, it's not my life anymore. So yeah. now a lot of my, I do have take a lot of projects. So I have like a knitting bag that comes with me and I bring um, any hand sewing projects I have or knitting projects, crochet sometimes with me. Um, those I'll sometimes have a couple of things going at once, depending on how things are going. And that that works for me because not so much this year, but last year I did a lot of sitting around waiting for kids. And, you know, I can't work all day. A lot of times my computer will come with me, but I'm like dependent on for the day. So, kind of how that works for me. But I don't know. How about the rest of you guys? Stephanie, how many projects do you have going right now? I try to keep the number of works in progress minimal. Um, and when I say that, I mean like one or two types of projects at once. So, I'll have like one or two quilts I'm working on, one or two bags I'm working on one or two garments I'm working on um right now I have I'm working on this quilt top which I'm, I'm almost done putting it together and I have an appointment to quilt it next week I have another quilt top that I need to lay out which is the, the part that I hate the most I think what do you mean lay out like do the do the arrangement put all the blocks out how how oh, I wanna you don't like that part I don't like that part and I I think that it's because I don't have a design wall and so I have to do it on the floor which is <sighs> like really uncomfortable I don't have a design and... wall either did you do your <laughs> bed that's what I use so what I've been doing is I take we have a card table and then we have like one of those eight foot like you know picnic type tables that you put outside or whatever that collapses down. So I'll put those up and sometimes I'll do some arranging on that. But um, also I found that it, I have a, certain things that are like flat and large, um, sort of like mini design what boards, you know, the, the ones that people will do their quilt blocks on and, yeah. and it has the um, batting on it that makes them stick. Well, I have yeah. some foam boards that are like that, that are larger. They're more like three by three, three feet by three feet, you know, so they're not gigantic, but if I put those together, then I can lay them out and then I can 
um, stack them up and hide them behind the hutch and, you know. Oh, there my, you go. My design wall is kind of put away. I, it's not the ideal, it's not the perfect um, system, but it works, you know. I, I did buy um, those cheap, uh, like, picnic tablecloths at Walmart that have that felty back. Yeah. Um, and, like, they're, like, they're, they're massive. They're, like, when I, there there's two of them. And when I, I was going to sew them together, and they were going to be, like, almost 120 inches by 120 inches. Um, and we bought some, like, picture frame, or picture hanging hardware to hang up on the wall. And I was like, oh, I can just, you know, throw some buttonholes on this, and we can just hang it up on the wall, and then I can roll it up when I'm done. But we haven't done that yet. So, so. Um, a long time ago, when I took, uh, I had taken a class at my local quilt shop and one of the ladies had taught me she said go buy one of these and buy a pool noodle and she taught me that if you are um doing classes or if you're doing retreats and things like that you can put your blocks on like lay out that um vinyl tablecloth put your blocks your pieces on it take the pool noodle and roll it up oh and, nice know, put, but cut down the pool noodle you know don't keep the pool noodle like four feet cut it down to like a foot and a half or whatever you know, roll it up. So I did that. I cut my um, vinyl tablecloth and my pool noodle. And then that way I just had these like two, I cut mine two feet. So I had these two foot that just rolled up. And then all I had to do is have my roll up thing. And it was my project all already laid out. That way I didn't oh, have nice. to conti continue to pack it up and then lay it out and pack it up and lay it out every time I went <laughs> to the quilt shop. Yeah. So it was yeah. super convenient. But that's when I learned about those vinyl tablecloths and how they really work the same as um, the batting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For design, for design wall and for design board purposes. Right. I am going to run to the ladies. So you guys keep talking amongst yourselves. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She's given us control of the We team. have no supervision. <laughs> Let us go crazy now. I need somebody to die on you on my phone while I'm there. It's all good. Oh, darn. <laughs> I need a piece of... Uh, Come on, Stephanie. Flannel. You know me. What'd you say? I use a piece of flannel. I know I have to send you to HR all the time, even now that you don't work for me. <laughs> Misty said that she uses flannel. She likes to use flannel. Yeah, I, I think that my mom does something like that, Misty. Yeah, I just sent to the wall and use it and then take it down. Yeah, my, my mom and my mother-in-law both do that. Um, I think they found like really big pieces for pretty cheap, whereas I found the tablecloths were just, it was all about what was there. <laughs> well, we got a bolt of flannel that was really, it was on clearance, so it was really cheap. And then we went to the Dollar Tree and got the uh, picnic table cloth that you're talking about with the flannel backing. So I have that too. Nice. Do you find that one works better than the other? Yeah. So what I was going to ask. I haven't tried the tablecloth yet. That's a more recent purchase. Okay. I haven't tried the tablecloths from the Dollar Tree, but, um, or the Dollar Store, but the ones I got were like the cheap ones at Walmart. They were like three bucks, you know, so they weren't, they weren't fancy. They didn't break the bank. I will say with the tablecloths, with the slicky, I see it as the back because I use the the other side, but the technically the front, um, if you're crawling around on a carpeted floor trying to work on your, your layout, um, it's slick and it will slide around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and my wonder, husband will not help me lay it out. <laughs> I wonder if you could like maybe put... I'm trying to think what would be solutions for that. So like maybe a um a little bit of hot glue at the corners or something, maybe that would work like like to, to make it stick. Or I'm trying to think. Yeah. You know, Give you know, it a little bit of traction. Like, yeah, or those little dots that we use on our rulers, maybe something mm -hmm. like that would work. Those might be, I mean, they're not like super expensive, but those might be a little expensive for that item. Um. There used to be this stuff that was like gum that we used back in the oh, the tacky. Yeah, that. Maybe maybe something like that. 
Maybe, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? I mean, we're eventually going to hang it up on the wall, so. I uh got some 108 flannel, and I was going to make, like, a foldable um design wall that could fit under my long arm out of foam board, like foam insulation. I would have to cut it a little short because I don't know. I think I have, like, seven and a half feet in the basement. Not quite eight. So, but that was kind of my thought. Is that it could come up and down, but right now there's not even room for that. So I got to get, got to get it together. I miss at work having all those tables that we can put to put together and. Oh, I know. That was layouts. Nice. Oh, Chantel is back. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like those big long eight foot, you know, tables. That's I. We have a couple of those, so I usually pull those out and then stick them together and. Did you get sucked into children's needs? Yes. Of course. I literally rounded the corner to go like to the bathroom to just blow my nose. Something very simple. And my son comes downstairs and he can't sleep. And dad is clearly asleep and he wants to sleep in our bed now and all of this stuff. So I go to take care of him. And then I realize that my dog Cubby has like a whole nother level of like paw just covered in dirt and mud and he's getting it everywhere and so Lovely. then he wants to go outside after i've gotten the kid down now in my own bed which is great where am i sleeping right so <laughs> i get cubby outside and he realizes that he's going to get his paws washed so he won't come back inside <laughs> you're a smart dog yeah you're going to like my dumb smart dog. So now I got him, you know, his paws. I got two of the paws washed. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, he ran upstairs. So he might have his wet paws all over my son and my husband right now. But that's their problem. At least they're not covered in mud. We have a, a question. Um, they need some accessories, products, recommendations. They have a brother sewing machine. I, I'm not familiar enough with the models to know exactly what that is. They're designing some unisex drawstring pants. Um, That would be a Stephanie 2.0. It probably question. would be a, a Stephanie 2.0. <laughs> yeah. They're looking for, what are they looking for again? They need some sort of an accessories recommendation for drawstring pants. What, what part? On a sewing machine. Gathering? Like foot, feet. Let's feet. Well, drawstring, you wouldn't really be <laughs> gathering. It's the elastic that's going to pull it in. Well, it, yeah. it depends because you have two different types of drawstring. You could have the one that just has the tunnel where you don't do the gathering, or you have the one that has the elastic where it's the drawstring in the middle of the two elastic pieces. Yeah. Actually, I need, I have a, I have a question about that too, because I have something that I bought at a thrift store that needs like just a touch of elastic in the waist or a drawstring myself and I need to figure out how to do that I'm just like I'm going to ask Stephanie you know, 2.0 uh, that's kind of funny elastic that is basically a quarter inch smaller than whatever the hole is for the waist yeah up. there is no hole I have to make a hole yeah I'll show you so what did they make they a grommet what were they looking I'll show for you. Um, I'm not sure about this other forward. person, but I'm now taking over with my own outfit. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, person. I hope you find what you need. No, we'll we'll help you in a second. So, I I bought this at a thrift store, and it has, it just needs like a little nip in the waist. Really, it just needs like a little thin elastic or something, but it doesn't have a pocket for a band or anything like that. You know what I would do with that, Chantel? Huh. There's two things you could do, like a facing on the inside, and then put elastic through there, and it would just be like another stitch. Or I would just wear a belt if it were me. I know. I, I know. But I feel too. like it just needs like yeah. But <laughs> the less effort, the better when it comes to actually having to wear it. It really no, is just too big. Are you wanting it to be elastic? Or yeah, I kind of, I kind of needs like even if it was just from here to here. Yeah, or I you think can I'm gonna take it... that really narrow, but the fabric is different than I'm used to using, and I don't know. 
Stephanie, is it, it looks like it's still woven. What do you it? suggest for Chantel's dress? Um, what I would do, um, I'm assuming that it's, it looks like it's a woven. Um, it has so no stretch say, to it at all. Okay. It has, so, yeah, that, it's, um, yeah. It's um, kind of so silky. It do, feels a little bit formal, but thin. Okay. Okay. Um, I would get, if you only want just a little bit to kind of pull the waist in, just get some yeah. quarter inch elastic. Um, and you can put it, can you show the seam on the inside? Yeah. I'm guessing that it's just surge. That's what they usually are. Yeah. So like right on like right on top of that seam or maybe right above or below it. Probably like right on the seam itself. I, I would just like get quarter on inch the elastic. Seam might actually work. Yeah, like on the seam and get your quarter inch elastic and you're going to you're going to need to use both hands but pull the the elastic not maybe not as, as tight, tight as, as as tight as it'll go, but close to that, and okay. sew it on top of that surged seam. So that way, when when you release the elastic, it'll it'll close again. Do I use a it'll zigzag again? Or you can if you want to. If you're pulling it, if you're if you're pulling it as you're sewing it, you won't. You don't yeah. necessarily have to. Oh, okay. Um, that actually makes sense now that I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, it doesn't hurt, but you don't, you don't need to, if you're doing that, if you're doing that. Yeah. So Susan Lee, she said um, that she would just stretch a piece of elastic on each side and zigzag it into the seam allowance. That's probably what I would do too. But you want to make sure not to get, because you, you know, the elastic has different strengths. So you want to get mm -hmm. a, yeah. low, a low number. Yeah, I have some. Uh, I was using it on the doll dress the other day, and now I don't see it literally right here where it should be. I still have 720 inch spools of it if you really need some. <laughs> oh, I should have. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Wait, hold on, Stephanie. You knew that number pretty fast. 720 is not like, oh, I have two. No, I, so in the pandemic, you remember you couldn't get elastic forever? Yeah. So I realized pretty early on that like we're gonna need elastic. Well, so I Googled, I was like, okay, we need to stock some math stuff. Because that's what everybody's making. We need to help people out, do our part. And I um went out, there's four distributors in the US, primary distributors for quilty fabrics. Every single one of them was out of elastic. And I realized this is going to be a problem because it all comes from overseas. Hey, so, I have some of your elastic. See, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. So I realized, okay, well, all these mass patterns yep. for elastic, no one's going to have it. And I um, did a video, start to finish in one day, I very rarely do that, about how to transform any mass pattern, like curved or straight, into a tie one from elastic. We got a million views in like a week. And then when we were able to get a supply of elastic, we would sell out of like miles of elastic. I remember. I in, had to go on at like a certain hour. time. It was crazy. I it remember that too. Absolutely nuts. And I was the one buying and I was making probably. masks for people and stuff too. It Although was I did nuts. hoard some of the kits because the fabric was really cute, like Laurel Birch stuff. And yeah. Yeah, I kept some. You did have some cutie things in there too. I guess I should try this on real quick and then show you guys and then you can tell me what you think for that. I'm going to yeah, leave. It was, it was nuts. And I still have a few spools because the, the interest eventually like, you know, died down. So. Right. But for a long time, know. like it was nuts. Just totally nuts. Well, yeah, I mean, that entire situation was insane. Yeah. And I had a six week old baby when everything shut down and I the kindergarten finishing school remote, a de book deadline and a business that doubled overnight. It was nuts. <laughs> totally I just remember crazy. following your Instagram, Stephanie, during that time and like feeling your stress through my phone screen. It was so crazy. <laughs> so crazy. I don't ever want to go back to that, but I do miss like the slowness of it. Like that was kind of nice. 
to not constantly be going here, there, and the other place. Like my schedule on a daily basis, just running my children places. Because I don't really have to leave the house most days if I don't want to, if not for getting the children places. And <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, their schedule is insane. What about well, you having a dentist appointment and doing a TV interview that same day? <laughs> yeah, there was that. <laughs> uh, that one was pretty funny. So I... Hey had... guys, I might have solved my own problem, actually. I think I shrunk it. Well, there you go. Did we ever answer the question about the the shorts? Oh, yes. the What they need for the drawstring. Let's see if there's any more information about it. All right, here's like my I'm hanging out with her outfit. five sibling sisters, and that's a compliment. So that's good. You must like them. Yeah, see, now it fits. I tell you, Chantel, you. Yeah. you just need like a little like woven belt. I know. Now and I do. Perfect. Well, it was it was a lot bigger before, but I shrunk it. So because I have a couple that. that are like that that I'm bringing. Yeah. with. they're just a little. Oh too yeah, big. looks perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Looks yeah. Good. Now, now it's fine. But when I tried it on, it wasn't, but I guess they shrunk it. So now that's great. Very cute. It was, it was like $3. You can't beat that. There you go. No, I know, right? $3, I can donate it when I get to London and I have too much fabric. Although this is pretty <laughs> cute now that it fits. Yeah, you need to just go back. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, so is there any more information about to leave everything? the drawstring? We need more info. I'm assuming you're using stretch knits for that. Because just the drawstring, I mean, there's not really, I mean, you could use grommets to make the holes, um, which I, I haven't done that, so I can't really speak to that. Um, but button holes. Yeah. I mean, there are button like hole that's, stitches. It's yeah, that's what I've done. Just use yeah. a button hole. You have right, I'm just going to wear this outfit now. You have the different type of cording you can use, or you can make your own strip to go through where it's not a cording, but it's more like a tube of fabric. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a lot of different variations. When I made a pair of drawstring shorts, that's what I did. I just, I used some of the, the fabric and it was in the shorts. And yeah. What I noticed is there is a drawstring on these pajama pants patterns but it's purely decorative what is up with the decorative drawstring yeah or like the pants that needs to go now yeah that's it's, it's almost as bad as decorative pockets it's the same <laughs> whoever right, thought if you're gonna put a pocket there put a pocket these have pockets my dress has pockets actually it's pants it's like a onesie it's i love pocket. those but then going to the bathroom is a challenge yeah, I know. I'm going to have to hurry through that process. Make sure that I'm ready to go. That I go before I get too excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like your, like no. your daughter today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so my husband, uh, I have had dinner with a friend, which I very rarely get to do. Like just do my own thing. Like this is the equivalent of my own thing that I get to do is this thing right here. And it's true. so I had dinner with Courtney, Stephanie, you'll know her. And uh, yeah, so I miss Courtney. I know I miss her too. So we got together and uh, I get this text message from my husband that he sent both children into the Costco bathroom and it was not a good situation. Uh oh. And I was not, like, there is, there is a family going bathroom, on. just so you know, for future reference. And he's like, well, it was closed. I should have waited. Lily had been to gymnastics earlier, so to complicate the fact that she's four and still can't really wipe the way she needs to when we're doing a number two, she's been sent in with her nine-year-old sister, who also is not really good at helping with that task, Oh gosh! to the women's bathroom. And she is also has gone in apparently by herself and is naked in the stall because you have to take the entire leotard off to go. And... <laughs> So, so my husband is telling Angela, my daughter's name, my older daughter's name, and this poor Costco worker who's also named Angela comes over <laughs> and no. rescuing my child from her situation. And I'm just like, oh my God, she did not make enough money to deal with that. <laughs> not okay. And, um, 
and that was at first apparently the women were like you know coming out like smiling at him you know like this is not how it would be if a woman was standing outside while this was going on like you would be getting the dirtiest looks but because he's a man <laughs> it's like oh you're trying so hard Keep exactly on and <laughs> but then eventually one person comes out and goes there's kind of a situation in there <laughs> like, written, oh. yeah. I hope you've written this down somewhere. Uh, it, well, it's now recorded so, for all the internet to hear. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean for the sake of when they get older. Oh, I know. I'm like, oh my God. I'm never forgetting that, so don't worry. I'll don't I'll keep worry. the memory for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, that was a poor choice. Well, oh, don't worry. <laughs> he knew it. My husband spoke. But anyway. One time I went to a formal with my husband and um, I wore one of those, uh, I don't know, it's sort of like a Spanx thing, but it was before Spanx because it's yeah. a long time ago. And a girdle. I, I didn't, well, it wasn't a girdle. It was like a something else, but you, you get the point. Might as well be. And um, it was whatever, wherever we were at, there was this little bitty stall and they were like super fancy stalls, you know, like in the movies where the uh, women when they're getting married and they have the dressing rooms and they have the little um, toilet area and it's all fancy yeah. and it it's looks like a like, Mar bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like that. And so it was super small and I went in there and it, I had to, to contour myself. I wound up having to totally do the same thing, get totally out of all of my clothes in order to <laughs> get out of this undergarment thing so that I could go to the bathroom just to go pee you know it was oh my gosh that thing when I got home that garment went in the trash because it was it was so yeah. hard I had no access to anything and it was so inconvenient and I told my husband I said I'm lucky I didn't pee all over myself I mean seriously the whole, I was more worried about that because I'm in this little bitty stall trying to you know deal with it all like I am bringing Spanx with me on on the trip. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna. I'm planning to like look nice for dinner, and I'm not at my fittest at the moment. I'm far. How do they look? How do they look if you've got depends on underneath them? I mean, that I depends. Smooth it out. Sorry. Shit. <laughs> Dad joke. Of um, but, uh, but I've I've learned to only do the ones that come <laughs> up to here. Like I do have some that'll smooth all the way up, but those I I very rarely wear. I, I, I don't like my the appearance of it with them on or without them on. So I just choose outfits that don't highlight any of the areas that Spanx would fix. Yeah, that's well, my and solution. It's not like it reduces your waist size; it just flattens it out. It so just repositions like, it. Like the bra puts my boobs where they belong, where they used to go. Yeah, where they used to be. That too. <laughs> we gave up a lot that. Gave Do you up know, on that. Uh, Kathy Hay. Yeah. No. You, have you? Seen I that? also prefer the shorts to like because I have some that are briefs, and then it just looks like I I have double butt, and that's not double butt. Yeah, you do get that. the 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 huggle butt kind no of thing. Um, she has a class. Uh, or, or an academy or whatever she calls it. I don't Night know. Tiffany. I haven't taken it yet, but um, the, the uh, Kathy Hay, she has this whole like um, thing where you can learn to make your own corset and your own undergarment. Oh, yeah. oh I've signed up for a course like that too. And I have always wanted to do that. And I told my husband, I said, I would love to do that. So right now her course is like half off for it which makes it like $300 a year. And so I've been thinking about doing it, but I just know that with Zoe having the baby this year, I'm not going to have time. I really wish it was no. like next year I could take it, but I'm so interested in doing that just because Spanx, I don't feel like Spanx work. Like not to, they kind of do, but then they kind of don't. That's I feel a right like, idea. I feel like Spanx before Spanx, there was this like uh, undergarment, that wasn't girdle, but it was like an in-between thing. I think that it worked better. And Spanx, they have started to make thinner and thinner and thinner. That's just, that's just my observation. So, yeah. I think. I used to be a corset wearer. When you're smaller. 
because I've been multiple sizes wearing Spanx. Yeah. And when and I it, was like a six or eight wearing Spanx, that was good. Yeah. Now it just feels like I'm stuffing stuff into it. Right. I'm like 16 right now. It just feels like I'm stuffing things in. It smooths it out. And so like the overhang from the C-section doesn't look as bad, but it's still not great. It's like you're stuffing a sausage into a casing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a sausage into a casing, she said, which is <laughs> I mean, completely yeah. true. That you know, like, no, but I get. want my casing to be hourglass. Like, come yes. on. Work the, with the me The older here. you get, it's harder as well, you know. Yep, yep. You don't have that. every single time this turns into everybody talking about how we're getting older and like <laughs> every single, I mean, this is about sewing. It's, it's not, it, I mean, it is, and it it's is. women time. <laughs> like, many men want to join that. us. That's cool too. But by the way, I'm doing nothing related to sewing right now. I am getting stuff off of my sewing area. This has been on my lawn so since like December. And the I've already got like the holes ready to go in my kids' room. And I have this one. <laughs> and then I am about to do another one for the little mermaid that we went to go see at. Oh, the cute. Office. So these I, I think can't I focus. Swap them out when we go to like really big shows and eventually have like a scrapbook of all the things we went to go see. That's cool. It's a lot of That's actually That's a cool. really cool idea. I'm giving up on the video because I'm just too hyper to actually like stay still and i'm sure i'm driving <laughs> people nuts because i'm all over the place right now i think you're fine you're fine. maybe but fine. like i need to like walk some laps <laughs> chantelle and i are, are maybe i don't yeah. know if really committed to this we're, we're doing this are we doing it we're doing this okay so i'm literally gonna... walking laps right now you can't see me but i am we're gone for 17 full days on this cruise. And of course, two of them are travel days. But I was like, okay, so it takes 21 days to make a habit. How about we take 30 minutes for ourselves? Because that's hard to do as a mom of younger children and like do some exercise. And she goes, I'm going to whine the whole time. I'm like, I understand. But I'm talking about like a brisk <laughs> walk around the deck, like enjoying the Atlantic Ocean, like 30 minutes of us walking briskly. And she's like, okay. But we need to start beforehand, so that way we are at like twenty one days it on day seventeen. So bad, too. I mean, I've been gardening. I've been doing. I've been like digging trenches and splitting stuff. Like I'm gonna. I feel like long arming has brought me to like tears in my shoulder and back after like doing that for a while. Yeah, I feel like my arms are really strong right now. Post hysterectomy horrible, says D. Yeah, I imagine that is not pleasant. My 28 year old granddaughter works for a catering company in Austin. And um, she just did a, um, let me see, she did a, a pre wedding party and the wedding. And then she did, on Monday, she did an eclipse party. There was four events that she catered for. And she, they t put them up in um, Brownwood up, up by Kerrville. And then they were in Kerrville for the um, the eclipse party. She walked the bottoms out of the insides of her shoes that she wears to work in. She walked 27 miles. Oh, my gosh. In, yeah, 27 oh miles in, in four days, 27 miles, oh. just around and around and around. Yeah. So yeah. my husband is yeah. a U.S. driver. He walks two marathons a week, and he's in the wow. best shape of his life. I'm in the worst of mine. Um, <laughs> pregnancy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like we need husband. to get this handled. Here's here's second mm -hmm. shadow box, by the way. So I'm going to be hanging but, some things tomorrow. Ooh, he I didn't love that a, one. He didn't pop a baby out, though, Stephanie. He didn't. So, no, I popped no. two. Technically, there one and a half. They had to cut the second See? out. But <laughs> same thing. That's same still thing. a way to pop. It just popped differently. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh! Be they be the nurse told me that there are only about two deliveries a year that are as bad as mine. That was like, that makes me feel wonderful. So. That's oh great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't tell well, my first story to anybody who's currently pregnant because it's, Oh no, fun. no, my pregnancies oh. were rough too. Oh, Hazel got stuck. They were within conscious? two they or three seconds baby. of like to take her out shopping things oh, and goodness. taking me straight. Yeah. Ugh. 
My last two were born at home. Really? Yeah, well, I had like, four. How, like intentionally, yeah. or you just didn't make yep. it? I had a nope. I had a midwife. Okay. The same, I had a midwife for b- both of them, and my last one weighed nine and a half pounds. Oh my god! Nice. And oh, I'm, my my and second I'm, was nine nine, and then mm. my third was nine ten. She was three weeks early. I'm oh only god. five foot. I'm only five foot three, so there was no place else. Oh, wow. to- uh, yeah, yeah. I'm five one <laughs> too. So I I get you. I I was my huge. Husband, my husband was uh, ten pounds nine ounces when he was born. I thought. And my brother was 10 pounds, one ounce. That's scary. So I thought that I, when we had kids, that they were going to be gigantic. And mm-hmm. nope, I was very happy. My daughter was only eight, six. I was well, like, he was, he was the easiest one to have because he just, he just, I took, I was in labor for six. Hours. He was in the hospital. My younger so. daughter, um, I had gestational hypertension. So they were going to induce me in the morning. And they gave me um, some medication because I wasn't dieting at all. And they're like, sometimes you go into labor, most of the time you don't. So here's an Ambien. This is the last night you're going to sleep. So I did end up going into labor overnight. And they did not realize it. They thought I was just complaining and asking for pain meds um, until I, like, thought that I had peed my pants. And then they checked. And they're like, oh, you're dilated. And I'm like, uh, yeah, this hurts. Yeah, and we're so, like, that's my it. only memory of the painful part of labor. Because by the time the Ambien like kicked off, like I had my epidural. And so that was fine. With my second daughter, though, the epidural didn't work. And so that was awful. And I was this, an induced pregnancy. So it had the prednisone, which is way more intense. And then she couldn't make it out. And I ended up getting like whisked out, put under, intubated, and like it was oh, not, wow. it was bad. It was what really a horrible. Bad. What a horrible experience. Well, and the one of the worst parts of it, um, I was there and I was concerned because my epidural didn't work that I was going to feel it when they cut because I wasn't sure what the procedure was for that. And at this point, I didn't know yet that they were going to put me under. And so the anesthesiologist said, no, you're, you're going to be out. And I heard her say, I'm ready. And I was with it enough to understand that she meant ready to put me out. And the doctor thought ready to cut. Oh, no. oh. And I'm oh. like, I'm awake. I'm awake. And then the last memory I had before I woke up and had a kid in my arms was someone yelling, everybody stop. Somebody's got to be in charge. And then that's it. I'm out. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. oh my God. This is horrible. Like I would never have had a second child if that would have been mm-hmm. my first. I, mean, right. I had four kids, and my first one was I was in labor with her for forty-two hours. She was born in the hospital, and I just—it was the worst experience I could say I ever had. I cried when I got pregnant with my second one, but she came so easy, and I slept through the contractions until I was dilated all the way, and then they wheeled me in, and I had her. And that was just like completely night and day. But were the children happened. night and day? The children, the yeah. Child that, the, the child that came easy, which was that the easier child um, in the long term? I always wonder that. It's like, just, I, I totally believe that. I totally do, Chantel, because the older one is kind of um, busy, busy, busy. And does her own thing and like that does, thing yep <laughs> and then the second one is very do ba do ba do 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 yep. <laughs> when, when i was when i was pregnant with her though she bruised the heck out of me i oh, i was okay. so sore all the time she kick and kick and kick and i was so bruised the whole top of my belly was so bruised from the inside i couldn't even touch the outside of my skin oh. I, you know, it was so bad but at least she gave you an easy delivery though yeah and I had a midwife with her all the way through but she was due this is what makes me say that she was due June I want to say 19th and she was born July 22nd no way oh my goodness Mm -hmm. yeah I was one of those kids I was like a month late that's how I was too my poor mother yeah I was huge. Well, you know, and I and I really think that it and people say, Oh well, you just miscalculated. Say, no, this kid was completely different, just like her dad, just real slow and real kicked back and whatever, you know. 
and she's not yeah, like in the kids. The first two have the same dad, and the second two have the same dad. So, yeah, that's funny. Completely different. My they mom said I was ten months. She thinks right. that back then she she swears my mom she swears that back then they let you go ten months. I know with my daughter they wouldn't let me even go a week over my due date. Mm. Oh, they usually let you go two. Well, I was you know, usually, but then yeah, for for me, like they didn't even let me go three weeks. Like I had, so the third child, I um, they didn't let me go past thirty-seven weeks mm-hmm. on purpose yeah. because the child before had gotten stuck, and I had so much fluid, and this child was measuring so large. That they're like, if we hadn't been following this pre- pregnancy since six weeks, we would not believe that this child is the age that it is. <laughs> she was huge. Yeah. You know, for three weeks early, it'd be nine pounds, nine ounce or nine pounds, wow. 10 ounces. Yeah. You know, and I'm not a very big person. So I, uh, no, you're was pat- a little bit of a shock. I mean, everybody's like, are you due yet? And I'm like, no, I'm like 23 weeks. Like, we got we got time. They're like, are you sure you're not having twins? I was like, number one thing you don't want to say to a woman who's pregnant and irritated at you already. Yeah, I know. Are you sure it's not twins? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that I also want to murder you in this moment. So please leave. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be justified. Yeah, I, it was so irritating all the time. I didn't even fit in maternity clothes. Yeah, I just, what I hate about being short and being pregnant is that you're so just stuffed in. Mm-hmm. Can't and breathe. Nowhere to go. It's a yeah. sausage thing again. The sausage like, and the were, casing. There were people in the the comments on my videos at that point in I time drive the car. who were like, are you okay? You can't get your breath. And I'm like, I have my lungs totally squished. Mm-hmm. I'm fine as soon as this baby gets out of me. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, yeah, I can't wait to see a Oh, Lord. Heartburn. Heartburn. I had heartburn. Oh, heartburn yeah. was awful for me. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to have the hairiest baby with a heartburn. <laughs> oh, that yeah. That's not what happened. With my second pregnancy, so like, the entire time, I felt like my legs were going to fall out of their hip joints because everything just hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It hurt so bad. But she yeah, was actually, she was almost born in the toilet. My second one. I've heard this story. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably heard it a couple times, Stephanie. Her husband was like, get off the toilet. He was, he was. So, um, <laughs> so I was scheduled to be induced because um, I was so, and I, when it comes to pregnancy and labor, I tend to be a little bit crunchier, like meaning I just like to like, just let it, let, let it do its thing, like as yeah. hands off as possible. But I was in so much pain and I was so miserable the entire pregnancy by like 30 weeks. I was like, get this baby out of me. Um, but so we, we were, I was scheduled to be induced and I actually ended up going into labor on my own um, around one o'clock in the afternoon, the day after she was due. Um, and so we got to the hospital that evening. Um, I ended up on the toilet thinking that I had to take a crap and um, <laughs> the baby didn't get up until she was crowning like I, I got up and you could see like what? from her, about her eyebrows was already out and the nurse happened to be in the room at that time so she pulled the emergency cord and the doctor came running in and <laughs> you oh my gosh uh, we've already said that, that you tried to get me off the toilet he was he was very worried about me he was probably how long did you try to get me off the toilet honey how long did you try to get me off the toilet? For like five or ten like, minutes. He's, he's like, like, wait, I thought this was a quilting channel. Yeah, yeah you know, long we, we, the, they can't that. hear you, honey. We are sewing. Well, mo- everybody else is sewing except for me, who's now cleaning their living room. I am but, cleaning. Um, <laughs> You're having an ADHD I'm cleaning my living room. Tell. I'm so bad, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> I'm currently making myself a kit out of one of the projects that's going to be in the next book so that I can at least get it like in a bag and have it. Mixed. I just found bubble wrap. So I'm, I'm doing that right now, actually. I'll let you guys see where I am. 
So I found it hard. My daughter, you know, Yay. is five months pregnant and um, she is plus size and I'm finding it, a hard, it hard to find clothing or patterns to make that will fit her. Check out size and um, Tilly and the Buttons. They are very size inclusive and since the owner is a woman, she has done some maternity add-ons that you can purchase and she's in England so you can have it shipped over or you can purchase the file and have it printed on a it's called a zero paper okay. um and so it's yep. just it's like a specific like drafting size paper. Staples has a, a printer that you can you can um, um just have it loaded into there um by like bluetooth i think while you're there yeah now do her files come too that you can print them on regular paper and connect them they do i loathe that with a passion but i understand but i'm just why why do you loathe that i hate jb having to put it all back together you know i I hate doing that too i've started going to a cop to a coffee shop and Printing the big sheets of paper because mm-hmm. taping yeah, it is the like, worst. So much, so, so much uh, tape to fold afterward. Okay, so it's not yes. the online file you hate; it's the happening to tape it all together with yes. the. Yes. Okay. Accurate. Not my favorite way to spend my time. Fair, but I would end up at a store buying a whole bunch of office supplies because I went to a store that had office supplies. So there are also places online where you can just have it like printed and shipped to you. And that's all they do is that. So then you won't end up with all the office supplies. I didn't know they, that even existed. It so does. Stephanie B, um, you said that you like to go to the copy shop and do it. How much does it normally cost? Because here it's expensive to do that. Um. So the copy shop that I go to, like, it, it's just, it's it's not Office Depot or anything. Like, I think I looked at Staples to get it printed, and it was, like, ungodly expensive. This other place, it's it's called Rapid Reproductions here in, in Iowa. Um, I want to say it's about five bucks. That's good. Oh, that's good. Um, that's about what yeah. it is when I've done it online, too. Yeah. Um, now, there is a, it's, like, uh, maybe a little, I think it, I want to say it's a little bit under five bucks per page for the big AO files. Um, there is a place online, I forget what the link is, but it's per page, it's cheaper, but the shipping is crazy expensive because they ship it in like a two, they don't right. Want for you. right? No. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna print like 50 pages or something, it might be better to go to this online place. Um, but yeah. if it's just a pattern or two, I go to rapid reproductions and pay them five bucks a sheet and they print it off for me yeah the yeah, owner knows me now when i am um, <laughs> basis <laughs> when i was in design school we had like the big drafters because i was drafting essentially blueprints and drafts all the time yeah and so i would use that to uh to magically print you know patterns and things like that when i wasn't supposed to <laughs> i need to I... figure out how to scan large format stuff for the book because i'm supposed to be scanning all the kids stuff rapid reproductions oh, will do that too Stephanie. Good. I should yeah. bring because i want yeah, to when we were doing the garment course that's where i went and scanned yeah but chantal when 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 did you do that because i feel like when i was at ball state the like there weren't pdf patterns online or if they were like they were brand new oh i would i would print things that i made like not just oh, pdf okay. patterns but like So I would have to make models or whatever. And so I would print out like pattern pages basically so that I would know exactly what sizes I wanted to cut my balsa wood and other things too. So I basically used my knowledge in sewing to build myself patterns instead of trying to like measure everything out. Um, Okay. Okay. Do stuff like that. And then there were other large format things, but I ended up buying a printer that could print like 14 by 20 or something like that. Um, like a large format printer, but not like super, super large, not your AO style. 
but um that was actually worth it okay for the amount of printing I ended up doing because we would finish our documents and we would do other things like you know have specifications of different items or whatever that you would have for a, a business or a hospitality unit or whatever and you had to have really good quality color prints and if you went somewhere that was going to be super expensive but the cost of the printer was probably, I don't know, 200 or $300. And when oh, really? you really broke it down, it wasn't so bad because the amount of printing that we were having done on a regular basis was so high that um, it kind of worked out. Now, that would, you know, now be like a $500 printer, I'm sure. <laughs> but I was going to say, like, I feel like a standard printer now, like, is about $200. <laughs> I know. Well, that exactly. That was like a while ago. That's when you, you get your HP for 40 bucks, you know, so. Yeah. Gwen, what do you make? I my own kit now. What am I making? Yeah. I am working on Halloween quilts. She is on a roll, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So let me show you all all of the blocks that I have done. I'm so excited. Okay, that so this is... um like wonky it's wonky it's not everybody's taste but this is for my sister-in-law supposedly <sighs> if you haven't heard the story she likes to run through her house and randomly purge things and my brother comes home and goes well where's my shaving kit and she's like oh i donated it to goodwill and he's got to go oh, out the store. she's one my of those <laughs> so my grand put that to me yeah, so I'm like worried about giving her this quilt because I'm worried that just one day she's going to be like, oh, well, we've outgrown this or we used it once and oh, good, well, here it comes. But we'll see. I mean, she'll still probably get it, but I might be like, can you please maybe if you're going to get rid of it, give it back or give it to somebody else in the family or something like that. So anyway, so here's some. I think you should keep it because I'm so proud of you for finishing your getting so much of it done. So yeah, these are these are some of the blocks um so each block has two so they're opposite um and it's a pattern it's a free pattern from fat quarter shop it's called night and day and they the way the pattern is written the dark the night is supposed to all be one fabric but you know i can never do anything the way that it's written to do be done in a pattern so i always have to be different so i'm making mine scrappy so that background the night is all the dark so each block is different and oh, so cool. then this like is oops I have them upside down let me put them right side up for you and so this is another one that I finished and I love that like this is one of my Ooh. top favorite with that, the zipper like it reminds me of like that one is juice. very pretty yeah. good. yes it's supposed to remind you of Beetlejuice yes because you know that's yeah. like the perfect Halloween movie right it's and then good, yeah she has um actually stephanie what day was your daughter born because my nephew was born on january the 11th he was six weeks old when COVID hit she was the 28th of january okay. so, she, cool. so this is the cupcakes and the candy corn that's fun nice and so you know even though it goes to her i have to put her personality into it but also make it fun so that my nephew, you know, will enjoy it as well. And then this is that this cool. This black one is like a science lab. I don't know if you can see the fabric. Am I getting it in there? See, it's like a mushroom oh, science yeah. lab. Oh my gosh, with that's skulls. Cute. That is yeah. really cute. So I um, love Halloween fabric. It's like playing games. It's toys. Yeah. So Halloween is her favorite holiday. And she is girly and she is biker B, if you know what I mean. Um, they write okay. Harleys, her and my brother. And so she likes all the funky, weird, strange things. Um, oh, I love that one. She's cool. country, city, a little bit of both, you know. Um, we're from Redneck Country, Missouri. Oh, yeah. So. Missouri. You know, Come on. It, you're from Missouri. No, you no, know no. it's Missouri. No, no, no. Missouri. Missouri. Well, where um, I lived, it was Missouri. <laughs> Missouri, I'll get you shot where I came from. 
Fair enough. I think we were the ones shooting though. <laughs> but this one has the roses with the um crows oh, and the pumpkins. Cool. I love cute. I love this rose uh fabric. It looks so vintage. I love that. And so then we have the skulls and the spider webs. And there's that one up close. They're like dainty little skulls. They have like little, see the little flower in the middle of the skeleton? Makes it they're so lady, they're lady skulls. That's right. Lady, lady, lady skulls. Skull. And then this fabric I hated when I bought it, but I knew my brother would get such a kick out of it because it was the vampire teeth, right? And oh. I finished this block, and this is like one of my favorite blocks. Like, look at that awesome <laughs> vampire teeth. That Makes is fun. Like my gosh with like that hatch kind of that hatch grungy looking background and then this is the last one which this looks different on camera than it looks in person the cats are actually kind of like a light black they, they read more gray in real life than they do on camera but I still like it um it just doesn't it's just not as much contrast to be able to you know see the oh, yeah. star because the cats come into play but you can hey it's a block made it through like full team i do that all the time. if something what, hasn't no? come out if you something hasn't come out quite the way i envision color wise i will differentiate via the quilting like i'll do all the background one way like you know maybe with something with curves or something and something right. that's more organic and then in like the part that's like the piece part i'll do through the work and it's very defined and yeah. it's actually a good point yeah. and being that it's called night and day i feel like a starry sky kind of thing in the dark area and then something a little more like structured and like the sunny area would be kind yeah. of fun. so it's so many ideas you can do and this was just i just wanted to do something like crazy and spontaneous and unique and different something kind of out of like this is out of my box this isn't normally the type of fabrics I pick it's not normally the design that I pick I normally don't do a quilt that has like repetitive blocks but I've been having absolutely so much fun I mean I I feel like this is like one of the funnest uh quilts I've ever made well, so to, like you said it can't be there's it can't be anything wrong because of the fact that you don't know if she's even going to keep it so as long as you gear it towards her and you have fun doing it, that's the important part. Yes. And so this is, um, I've been cutting some blocks. So this is some Hershey chocolate fabric oh, that dude. I got. I'm excited to about it. And then this one is really weird. So this, I, cause I've been cutting out more fabrics for the background. Cause I have a oh, whole bunch of, Oh, I love that. That's fine. I have a, a whole bunch of the days cut, but I didn't have enough black set or dark. So I had to order some. So they're like, almost like apothecary type things or advertisement yeah. type thing. I have some oh. of that fabric too. And I've been wanting to use it as like labels on the back of my yeah. Halloween stuff. It's so oh, cool. Yeah. Like some yeah. of the stuff, but I picked out all of the dark because some, some of the labels have white, like this is the only piece that I left the white in. And I just left it because it said body brace. And I thought that's so, you know, Halloween um, <laughs> kind of thing. But anyway, so that's what I've been working on is cutting out more of the background fabric for those and um, getting this together. And yesterday I put all the blocks, I laid them out just to see because they're so different, you know, being scrappy and strange and out of my box. I, I wasn't sure how it was coming together. And when I laid them out, I actually really liked what I saw. I was like surprisingly happy. I was jumping up and down going, oh my gosh, it looks good. It looks good. It actually looks good. <laughs> and my husband was like, yeah. do you think it wasn't going to look good? And I go, You're well, like, sometimes you don't know. You don't know, you know? Sometimes so, it's a big surprise. You're just like, I'm just taking a chance here. I rule it. I, it's for somebody else. You just kind of roll the dice. You don't right. always use your better judgment you're just like well this is what they would like and then sometimes you make something gorgeous and you had no intention of you know making something and, you liked so much because it was really for somebody else yeah and, and every so about this, text messages like i really would like to keep this but 
<laughs> oh, that's <laughs> everything I make. Oh. I really want to keep this. I don't keep anything that I make. It's funny. I really don't. I don't. At least I don't finish the things that I made for myself. How about that? Well, everything Chantel, you can make something for me. Everything Wait, about what? this project, everything about this project is like outside of my taste or comfort zone or, you know, it's, it's been fun because it's so different. Like Hall Halloween's not really my, my holiday. Um, it, but she, they have this big Halloween party every year. It's her favorite holiday. They do all the scary stuff. They do all the fun stuff. They, I mean, it's like, it's like their Christmas. Okay. Halloween is. So it's perfect for that and then the fabrics that I picked I didn't pick like a Halloween line instead I grabbed all sorts of other things and even some of them don't I mean chocolate chocolate is not oh I think of it chocolate right yeah. but it works but it's it like works. definitely adjacent because right. like yeah buckets of right. candy exactly so I just had so much fun doing this so now um I got to figure out what my next fun, you know, really outside of the box project is going to be. And uh, it was funny because I was talking to my husband earlier in the week when I'm so excited because pretty much every day I've gotten between uh, right around two to four blocks done um, all week long. I've been working at it and he's like, uh, maybe that is your taste. Maybe this is your thing and you didn't know it. <laughs> and I'm like, well. I don't know. To be fair, I I mean I like working that way, but then sometimes I get bored if I have everything too structured. Like if I'm making a pattern and I chose the fabric that they suggested and I did everything according to the way it is, I get a little bored and then the project usually doesn't get finished. So the worst I'm the worst at and I don't I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't worst. buy kits anymore <laughs> because of this. I am the worst about buying the kit. And not using the fabric that came with the kit, curating my own fabric, and then taking that fabric and it goes in my stash. And then I asked myself, well, why did I buy the kit to begin with? Why not just buy the pattern? Yeah. You know, I, I, I like using my kits for other projects. It's kind of funny, but it's like I, I cross them over. I've actually considered stuff. I have a whole bunch of your kits. I'm like, I'm going to just mix these up. I'm going to, you know, use this one for a different pattern than it was supposed to be. And hopefully the uh, yardage is close enough. Cause... Oh, like for the quilt letter synonymous ones? Yep. Most of them are interchangeable. You might not have enough background pattern. Background, yeah. That's the biggest thing. I figured that was going to be the... Well, because they're all made for a certain amount of fat quarters, basically. And, you know, if you need an extra one, you can find it. I, I might be able to find an extra fat quarter in my stash. I think <laughs> I'm kind of liking using like solids and using them for like coordinating solids or like, you know, things that, that are going to be in contrast, things like that. And I really like that. And I like to make the backgrounds not be like white or off white. I like to have them be a, be a tone, you know, and it just seems and, like it yeah. makes things more crisp and, I don't know. Sometimes I like that better than I do doing a print or a floral or whatever it is. And it just seems like, so I've been kind of gathering up Bella solids here and there in some different coordinating color. And just I'm trying to get more solids too. I, I'm terrible about having solids mm -hmm. on hand. Yeah. I just don't because that's not what I get excited about. So it's not right. what Me I too, yeah. have ordered around, but I just ordered a whole bunch of extra solids because it's like, when you need them, you need them. And you need them like now, not later, not in a week if you're ordering. Like is my situation nine out of 10 times. Yeah. Although we do have a store I found locally that um, if I can get over there, they have all like 300 colors of Kona. Oh, wow. Yeah. They That's have all of them in stock. Susan, do you, are, is Bella solid? Is that your solid of choice? I like them really well. They seem to be, they like iron, too. you could iron them really well without having to use a starch because the minute you hit them with a steam, it seems like they firm up, but they're not, yes. they're I not agree. crunchy and they're not, um, they're not flimsy. I like, and I like, um, um, art gallery, but art gallery tends to be really thin. So and slippery. 
yeah yeah kind of yeah isn't that very weird? slippery but the finishes are so different for everything but i do like bella solids a lot and i do like the color choices there are and there are several different solids out there um but i've found doing like um what's the name of that pattern company pin and pin and paper is it um she did know. like pin and i think it's pen and paper um she did, she the did like the sparrows in the books book, the books and the she just recently put out a new one that's um it's a, a polaroid camera down in the corner and then all the blocks are they look like polaroid pictures and you can actually oh, um cute. yeah you can actually like use like fussy cut you know like tool or whatever and put in the picture but like you know like the kind of the pictures like you click the button oh, man i can't remember who that is but i do know who you're talking I, about I now yeah, i feel Cooper. like i've seen it's that Pam as well. Selkirk. Pam Selkirk, I think, is her name. I think it's Pam. I think. And anyway, it's pen and pen and paper. I want to say it's pen and paper. Anyway, anyway, I did her strawberry quilt and I liked how it turned out really well. And I did another one of hers. And I really like how she writes her patterns. So I, I so that's kind of gotten me into more of a um I guess making shapes with what I have as far as the tones go rather than trying to make something out of a out of a you know a charm pack or whatever because it seems because that really messes with my brain because not to me not everything in a line goes together all the colors don't go together because I right. want to so sort of there's a reason for that um mm -hmm. I've I've done a line and okay. so I I kind of know a little bit of what goes into it so okay. a lot of them they start out, even though digital printing is very common now for um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. fabric, mm -hmm. um, a lot of places will, even if they're doing digital, will still design as though they're doing screen printing, rotary screen printing. And the mm -hmm. expensive part of creating a design is having the screens printed. So that, because every color you see in a design is a different screen. Right. And uh, so it is very common to see like the same print in three, four different colorways and three or mm. four different colors and values throughout it, which can make it challenging um, from trying to use everything because you might end up with way too many lights mm. that you actually need to make a quilt look good. Um, mm. So that was always one of my challenges with designing was making sure that that. Yeah. Um, the other thing about that is you're going to start with way more fabrics than you're going to end with. So right. we started, we ended up with 16 prints in my collection. We were narrowing it down from 30 ish. And when it got to the end, like there were colors that were in some of the others that just didn't work anymore once it was narrowed down. And so like, I remember talking with the person that I was working with and I was like, I now understand sometimes when you see a color and you're like where did that, where did that one come from only yeah in this one print mm -hmm. that's why it got narrowed down and then the color didn't get switched out so in my instance i was like hey this color isn't in anything else anymore we need to switch it it needs to go somewhere different and even now like i look at it and some of the teals are like the lighter teals are just like it's okay it's a just little a different and you know it's stuff that you learn yeah when i bought it. a fat quarter um a packet of fat quarters i love doing that but i want to do like maybe two of the colors and i want to mix and match and use some of the yeah. yeah and you can't always do that like right now like with tilda let's just say for instance tilda i love tilda it's one of my favorite 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 fabric lines yeah. love awesome. all the that, that she does and but i don't want every single every single color of it because i it's very expensive for one thing and i don't want to have a stack of stuff sitting that's just looking at me i want to be able to have a project <laughs> because i know me it's just going to be added to the stack i'm trying to keep from yeah. adding to my stacks too much because i don't have space for stacks so so i i would like to buy like just all the blues and then put a, another color with it pick a color for the background you know, like with the teapots that I did, it's got that sky blue, 
just kind of pale sky blue background on it. And it's so excellent for what it is, but the teapots are all like red and, you know, yellow and whatever, but it, but it really works well that way. I don't know. It's just funny. I, I just think to myself, gosh, I wish I could buy just this, this, and this. And then I think, okay, well, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to half a yard of this and half a yard. And they're like, oh, forget it. I'm not even doing it. Cause if I, I can't even pick what I want, cause my brain goes into freeze, freeze dried. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I understand. Then I buy everything. Mm -hmm, yeah. I'm like, I have oh, a, I'm not going to buy anything. But I came here to buy something. You have what? I have a bag of fabric that will show you how I think of this in my own book. So oh, I went to a quilt shop near us to oh. get, I think, thread that I needed. <laughs> and I'm doing a did panel thread. Quilt book. Did you yeah. come home with the thread? That's what I want to know. I did get the thread. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing a panel quilt book and I was looking for one that was 36 inches wide. And it's also supposed to be like seasonal. So this one, it says winter and it's 36 inches wide. So I'm like, okay, I started like designing out, like, what is this quilt going to look like? Uh -oh. <laughs> and I ultimately decided I wanted to do a dark background because I want to actually be able to use this in my house. Uh -huh. And I have messy dogs and children. So uh -huh. I went with that and I went with like four yards because that's usually like my safe amount for background. Right. And then... I think that's a totally different project. <laughs> I got. I really. Yes, it is. Or is it? This part's different. That I got. I just want to say we did make it to midnight. So we did. We made it to midnight. So then I really? got a no, fat I quarter okay. of everything. I don't think that these are going to make it in the quilt because even though it's part of the collection, it's like just a couple things in the collection. I don't think I'm going to make it work in there. And what I instead focused on doing was like all the teals and blues. Oh, they'll be good. Yeah. yeah. And I got a fair amount of the lights. You know, as I said, sometimes you end up with like a back of a lot of lights that normally won't work. Well, if my background is dark, then I can use all these. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's fine. That's like my favorite nice thing is using practice. a dark background because the amount of fabrics that they make that are light yeah. are never the right proportion to the amount that are dark. And so, so I have like all these darks and those will just be centers and these will be outsides and it'll look cute. And uh -huh. then I grabbed these for borders and I just bought a couple yards. And so this will end up in stash probably. And I probably won't use all of this. But I'll use a fair amount of it. But like that's kind of how I think. I get the bundle, the fact quarter bundle, and mm -hmm. then you know I kind of think out from there. I literally have no idea what I thought with this. I think my kids wanted it. Probably. Was I even thinking with this? Maybe I'm going to make her baby quilt. I don't know. There's a bunny. I don't There's... know. I give up. I, I think I just want to make your pattern. <laughs> you can do it. I still haven't cut mine. I did get to a point where I could cut it, though. I was trying to have something ready for the cruise so that, you know, maybe I would sew on the cruise, you know, on a machine. But I, I really just want to make it because machine. I I got, <laughs> I cut it all. That's like 90% of the battle for me most of the time. Oh, me too. Yes. I hate the cutting part. Did you go to? Me too. I hate it. I don't mind it because I do a lot of shortcuts. That make it go faster. I do too. Yeah, but I well, what are your it. shortcuts? Um, I like layer my strips yeah. like every like inch. I don't want to cut through like two levels of things at a time, but I'll like. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You showed me that. Which, yeah. Right. I mean, even I. I mean, you like, have to like be confident in yourself because if you screw it up, you screwed everything up. Yeah. But, like I'm confident that I would screw everything up. Does that? Count? I've done that. I have definitely done that. I'm not immune. I've done that. I kind of like, like cutting pieces out of like fat quarters. If you cut pieces out of fat quarters, you got a, a handleable size. But I don't have a, a my my cutting board is 24 by 18. That's all the space I have. Is. It's so that that is that's and I don't have a table. I don't have a big table to cut on. I all. have a big cutting so. board, but sometimes I actually just like. I use a smaller one on top of it because I can rotate it. Right, but not if you're That's cutting me. the background. 
Because you got all this yardage and you got to lay it out and cut strips and yada oh, yada. Oh, I just, I usually that chop off crazy. my yardage whereabouts I need it and then I work with a smaller bit. Yeah, I've done that before too. I'm trying but to still, find out if this is even all from the same collection. Come on. <laughs> hey guys, I think I'm going to go. I have like the sniffles and I cannot stop like sniffling. It's all good. I think we probably should call it a day because it is rather late. Or you and can stay that's on for not like, like 10 me. more minutes because I am working on the last row of my quilt top. Okay, well, we have oh. to stand for that. Then. <laughs> yeah, we will stay I, for I'm that. I'm pressing the blocks and then I will sew it to the top and then the quilt top will be done. We understand. <laughs> We're there for your moral support. <laughs> we, we will stay. Okay, good to know. We this understand. all from the same collection. I did, in fact, mean to use it as one project. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I bought it too long you ago. Know. I've lost that train of thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have some of that in the drawer, too. I have a whole pile of things yeah. that I got. Like, what am I going to do with this? For Pete's sake. I think I was going to make a baby quilt. I think that's what I was going to do. I don't. I don't know. Like, like, not like a baby baby quilt. Like a quilt. A small scale quilt for the baby dolls. Because it's all like tiny oh, cool. a dolly, and it's very baby dolly. Yeah, and like that's it's cute. Yeah. Oh, there Ooh. well the bunnies. Never mind. There was a sale today on um, American Girl. I think that probably just ended right now. I do not need to buy any more of that label. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking <laughs> about me right freeze. now, and I'm realizing that maybe the sale is over, and I'm screwed. Hold on, we got to take care of this right that's now. Okay. But so I my daughter got, the point was my daughter got a bald that. doll today. She's very excited about her bald doll. Yeah, Angela was curious about that. I was like, well, you know, some kids are going through cancer treatments and they want to feel like Yeah, we were talking about all the reasons why, you know, that would be a thing. That's cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool because she, you know, we got to talk about what that would mean and why somebody would have to you know go alopecia. through that and it was a uh, mm -hmm. yeah or even like some people like to have their hair really short and that's okay too yeah my four-year-old does not understand that some girls have short hair and some boys have long hair like that doesn't make sense to her really no not at all not the four-year-old at all the older one is fine but the younger one has no idea but I have made progress. That's okay. I no longer have laundry on here. These are oh, book projects wow. that I need to deal with. This is also book stuff that needs to be dealt with. I need to cut all those into little pieces, but I don't know that that's a project for right now. That's more flannel, pajama, uh, like hopes and dreams. I think I may just hopes need to have dreams. a flannel pajama bin. And a bin of stuff for the book that's like for later when it's time to do video tutorials. And I also have more things here. I still can't get over there. Get those. But <laughs> maybe tomorrow. I can go find these three of them and get them too. Okay. Yeah, do that. Um, what do you think about one day or something going to Mustard King? I hear Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's in here. Come, come over and say hi. Okay, you were Anytime. Stephanie. You were talking when I showed this fabric. This is one Ooh, I just. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. super cute. Oh, I love that. Say something so I can see you. YouTube Isn't that cute? Girl that's skulls. Adorable. I hold, say say something and hold it up again. Like pink. You have to talk while you hold it, or YouTube can't see it. Oh, me? Yes, because it only shows the speaker. Okay. Okay. There you go, girl. Oh my skulls. gosh, I love it. It's it's almost like uh Valentine skulls or something because they're like Ooh. red and pink and kind of a orangey color in there. I love it. What line is that from? Um, this is called I only have part of it because I only had a half a yard. Forest Whispers by Helen Black. <gasps> So I got oh, there was a there was a panel from that line that I wanted. Oh yes, I actually saw that panel too. I know what you're talking about. It has this yes. like 
kind of like a gothy, beautiful thing going on, yeah. but it had lots of vibrant colors in it. But it was still yeah. dark. I, I remember yeah. that the wolf is what the really wolf. got my yeah. attention. Because like I love wolves. I'm a wolf girl. I think I recognize those skulls. So I'm gonna have to figure out the right fabric to go with them because I don't know that I'll be able to use them as the knight with so much color. Well, yeah, I can. I guess if I chose something that's like really white to put next to it. Or I like a hot pink too. Yeah, hot pink would be. Oh, oh, so more like something that maybe reads as a color solid instead of a color yes. print. Yeah, yes. the deep, 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 ready pink color. I like that. And I actually, where did you find that, Gwendolyn? Like, I, I have not been able to find anything from that line anywhere. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. And I bought this in the fall. This was right before Christmas. Um, I do not know. I I can't. I couldn't tell you. I maybe on Etsy, maybe at my local quilt shop. I don't know. It okay. could It definitely was not quilt con or uh, mid Atlantic. It was not there. I had that because I had this before Christmas. Okay. Hold on. I think I have a good pairing for it. I'm going to look real, real quick. I am a hot mess, guys. I literally <laughs> just went through and put away all of my... Oh, no, wait. This is for my quilt that I'm using. Never mind. I almost put away everything I'm using for the quilt. <laughs> Except me. That has a purpose. There are ones, though, that I'm not using, and I don't know where they are at the moment. Probably oh. in, a bit in that general direction. But do you, do you keep a journal, like, of what you're doing? I mean, in front of you. I keep, like, a, I have, a, like, a spiral notebook. And when I'm doing a project, I'll write everything down in a fashion that I can understand rather than the pattern. Because sometimes I'm looking at a pattern, and I'm just going, what are they even talking about? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I perfect. stare at patterns, and I'm like, oh. I have to read the words. That's the worst. That's cute. Mm -hmm. That's super I, perfect. Don't yeah, I have a hard time reading that too. myself knows. Ooh, I like that. That's a great comment. That's good. That's real good. Hold Show it again and say touch. something. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, Can you see it okay? It. I mean, is it reading the is that, this is like, um this is, is free spirit? Uh, Ravel, Ravel, Ravel. Ooh. By let me look. Free spirit, yep. revel, revel, e bond, yep. e bond. Yes, I, I have e bond. I did a project with them. It's really cute. Yeah. Okay. So you like those together? Does that yes. work? Yes. Does this look Halloweeny with the alphabet e bond fabric? Oh, oh you don't even notice that after seeing it looks the skulls. Spooky. It, it looks like okay. mist or something from here. It looks like mist. Perfect. Because I bought this thinking that this would be so awesome for her i'm sorry the light is blinding at this angle but i'm thinking that it would be perfect for this quilt and then um as i was doing it i'm like eh. so i put it aside but now yes you have the consensus of the internet that it's fabulous fabulous yep. the entire internet all like five of us yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. more online watch it a lot there's 22 watching right now Woohoo! Really? Mm -hmm. We're breaking awesome. the internet. Amen. I mean, considering it's 12.15 in the morning where we're at. Well, yeah. Uh, one fifteen here. We've had 588 ah! over time. Are Big you serious? Three. That's crazy. We can crazy. only retain people for about 7 minutes and 20 seconds, according <laughs> to stats. It didn't pop up on my screen. You guys were already on here for quite a while because I was doing something else. And I'm like, oh, dang it, it's Friday. I it's, missed well, we had a lot of trouble getting on again because, you know, well, baseline. Hopefully now. Hopefully I think now, now we have it mostly figured. Yeah. So that's What am I doing with this? Oh, I'm so excited. I get to use the Ebon fabric. And then I think I'm going to go back because for sure I bought this at my local quilt shop about um two weeks ago so i think i'm going to go back and get more because i really really love it they have the whole line i but might need I to would... send you some cash and you can get the, the panel and send it to me i want the panel too 
I'll send you something as well. Just to make sure that if there's only one panel, I get it. Not you know, we are totally... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so like when you guys get back from the um, cruise, right? We should totally do like some type of a swap. swap. Yes. Can... Oh, I have so much to swap. We could do, we could even do like a little mini quilting bee or something, you know, like just something small. That would be fun. That could be, That'd fun. be fun. Yeah. I'm currently going down the rabbit hole of cutting these things down. We'll have our own guild before you know it. So, so Sophie, what, what were you what were you saying about the journal thing? I didn't hear what you said. You said you don't do a journal because of something. Who me? No. Or so who said. me? I don't because normally I'm like going start to finish on stuff. Like this last few months where I'm like wishy washy into this, that, and the other thing, that's unusual for me. Very that's that, that's why I do it is because I can't I've just got so many things rolling around in my brain and too many things external things that are I've have to deal with and stuff that I I have to write everything down I have I keep a list of what I'm doing in my phone <laughs> because if I don't do that I'll get in the car drive to the store and go wait what was I here for oh wait hold on I, I do that five shopping things. List. what were those we five do that things? We do that. We keep a list in our phone too, and we have it shared. My husband and I, so that way we oh, yeah. can both add yeah. to it and subtract it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that too. I we do that too, but my husband doesn't do it right. <laughs> How's he doing? It wrong? That's an early on. You he just don't doesn't mark anything it. off or put anything on. It's amazing. <laughs> it's been years. Too many choices. <laughs> Mine yeah. is like if I'm going to the garden center, I have to write down what it is that I want, mm -hmm. and then I kind of add it up in my head, and I'm like, okay, I've hit the budget for this week. Everything else is going to have to wait till the next week. Yeah, because when you get there, you're gonna you're gonna be oh squirrel, you know? Because yeah, I forget. Yeah. I forget the thing yeah. I really it's need. Like, it's like a big party of oh yeah, I want this and that, and those and these, and then I'm like, wait, what did I come here for? Thinking my language there. Mm -hmm. I have. I speak my husband thinks this squirrel. is ridiculous. But, like, I have an uncanny, like, ability to remember, like, the tiniest. Like, I will never remember. Me anybody. too. Never, ever. But I will remember the randomest little tiny details. Oh, I do too. Like, yeah. when we are I can't remember my best friend's Christmas phone number when I was 10. I know which one goes in which box. Me oh. too. Yeah. I think I, like, I, I, kept, I put it in my own head. Okay. You don't, if it's written down somewhere, you don't have to keep it in here. And then that way you don't. Well, get too full of things that you don't need to keep in your head well that that kind of bit me in the behind because now i'm to the point where i, I can't remember nothing unless i write it down <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh yeah whatever you trained yourself yeah yeah so like i've been like that for years if it's not written down it doesn't exist i have this pile of extras which i feel like it's too much for me to throw away like i normally will like give away things no problem but i are there two of these they don't actually exist <laughs> as pajamas yet, but I am going through and cutting them into like two and a half, four and a half, six and a half inch things because I think it would be really cool to someday have like a quilt of pajamas that mom at least started and had good intentions for. <laughs> Is it Hopefully flannel? Finished. Is it flannel? Yeah, or... it's flannel. Ooh. So... And Tal, I think you and I both had the same thoughts. Like, ooh, is it Tula? Is it Tula? I'll take it. Done. It is not Tula. <laughs> Darn. It is not Tula. I don't want it. it is Joanne's really cheap flannel. Yeah, I, 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 I'm packed full of stuff right now. I can't take anymore. Unless Chantel, it's Tula. did you order the Roar yet? No, I tend to wait a little bit. Because most people, after some... After like all stars, people started ordering like a lot, a lot, a lot of fabric of hers. And there's always some available, it seems like. It's not sorry, but I know this is going everywhere. <laughs> it's not the same level of um like you can only get it by pre-ordering it. If I pre-ordered, it pretty much had anything to do with like it was Stephanie and I was calling her and I was like, Okay, are you getting this? When are you getting this? Can I buy it? yeah and then she i would text her like the night before the email went out and she would get whatever <laughs> she wanted and 
Yep. Well, I was <laughs> or buy all of it. I, I remember was... Tiny Bees. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bought all of that. I was going to get I was, this I was week, little but I didn't make it over there. I had like my own box just when you guys closed, right? Like of my yeah, we random just kept stuff. It, kept it going. And <laughs> when you were ready, we were like, okay, now it's time to ship it. And uh, that box showed up at like the perfect time. Nothing's ever been more perfect than the show up time of that box with my husband finally leaving the house. <laughs> all of a sudden 